to go for the field goal. Absolutely, have to. Got to put some points on the board. This is no chip shot. Where are they putting this? It should be at the 29. If the spot is where I think they're going to call timeout, I believe, and they will. Paxson burns another time in the open tonight, and that is exactly the case. These two teams care about their football, they care about their academics, and they care about their schools. A lot of pride on the line tonight. Gregorian under center on third down. Looks right. That pass is going to be overthrown. Oh, just off the hands of number 33, Daniel Blaylock. Blaylock running a little flag pattern, had trouble picking up the ball, and Gregorian had actually dropped that one to where it was catchable. Three and out for the Blue Devils. And into punt comes number six, Zach Brust, who handles all of the kicking for the Blue Devils. Deep to receive for Paxson. We get a number there. I believe that's Keon Berry. It is number 31, Keon Berry deep to receive for the Golden Eagles of Paxton. Watch Bruce put the boot to this ball. I watched this kid a couple weeks ago. He can really kick. Snap and a low kick in the direction of Barry. Barry has three Devils to contend with. There's a flag on the play. Barry was drip, tripped up by number 10, and that is Michael Johnson, who plays safety for Stanton. And we do have a flag back at the 38, and I think we're going to get a block in the back where Paxton will move. But let's kind of finish your thought. The, the rivalry developed. Now, this was not an old-time rivalry, but as the Magnet program came into uh, to, to being here in Duval County, these two teams really pull from the same pull of junior high school students, correct? Yes, they do. They do. And I tell you, that's one thing I really like about this special. These, these kids on the field, all 22 of them at any given time, are true student athletes. And that's very special these days, I think. 90% of these kids are going to go on to college, and not because of the 40 time. That is correct. We have some of the players from... Paxton being recruited for their football ability and a lot of them being recruited for their academic uh, and some for both. Well, I'll tell you one high school, uh, former high school football coach whose opinion I respect a lot told me just a couple weeks ago, looking at uh, Gregorian out there, he says that, that kid's got D1 potential. That he can play anywhere he wants to probably. Absolutely, and as it goes on there, four players on Paxton being recruited actively for their football prowess. And, uh, they're going to rotate quarterbacks on us tonight. Starting is number 12 and throwing that one ill-advisedly. That ball is nearly intercepted by number five, Darren Wakefield, the senior cornerback. But that was uh, David Lee who started at quarterback. But we are going to see three different quarterbacks, and they're going to rotate them in every play, maybe every other play. Uh, uh, Coach uh, Seward telling me, he said it's a little Spurrier-esque, and for a guy from Midwest, that's hard to take. But this is what they do. Each of them have their own strength. And now coming into quarterback now is Jimmy Marlowe. Marlowe likes to run the spread option. And Trey Pig, the running back number two, keep an eye on him. Marlowe's going to keep it this time. He's got positive yardage trying to step out of a tackle. That gains five yards and falls forward for almost six. Jimmy Marlowe, we will see, run that spread option. And they are going to change quarterbacks out again as David Lee comes back into the game. If you're just joining us, it's the Comcast High School Football Game of the Week. Paxson with the ball in white and gold, the Golden Eagles of Paxson, taking on the Stanton Blue Devils, the two college preparatory magnates in Jacksonville and Duval County. Third down for Paxson on their first possession. Stanton went three and out. Stanton crowding the line, turns and hands to Pig. Pig gets over the right side. Pig's got a lot of room. Pig's got 10. Give him 11. First down for Trey Pig. And you will hear his name all night long. Big Trey Pig. Let me get you some information information on that young man. He is a senior. He's 5'9", but he's pushing 200 pounds, and he has a load to bring down. And two uh, lines here that are a bit undersized for uh, what you normally see in high school ball, but they play strong and they play hard. Yeah, they, sp they spread the field a lot, and that helps in that respect. Trying to pick up the quarterback is Marlowe. Marlowe under pressure, gets out of it, makes a good move at the 35, has that ball tucked away, picks up one, maybe two, credit the Stanton defense. Number four coming in there, Greg Pino, to, uh, to clean up. That's a senior linebacker finishing off Marlowe on that play. Just underway, 8.51 remaining in the first quarter. I formation now as David Lee is under center. Pig, the tailback, will take the ball, follows a block, steps out of a tackle, steps out of another one, and then is wailed by number 11, James Lee. And James Lee is a terrific football player. James Lee is a uh, Actually, is that James? Or that's actually James Lee. He's the one. He's being recruited by a school you might have heard of, Harvard, for his football capability. But he also carries a 3.7 GPA, and he can bring it, as you just saw. Third down now. 
for the Golden Eagles of Paxson. Zone, they run at it, and good tackle by number 21, Anthony Jeanette. Jeanette, another senior linebacker, comes up, plays his position well, forces a punting situation for Paxson, number 80. Uh, number 80 is uh, Ryan Lankford, who is the punter, and deep to receive is number one, Eric Yee. Eric Yee, their go-to wide receiver, standing at about his eight-yard line. He's an exciting kid. I've watched him play. Pressure today. right up the middle. Just got it away as James Lee almost blocked it. Yee gets under it. Yee makes one man miss. He's got a lane over here to his left. Reverses field. Reverses field again. And is going to be stacked up. No, they can't get him down. There's a flag on the play. He's finally hemmed in and tackled by number 21, Zach Chartrand, a junior defensive back. Plays corner for Paxson. We'll check the flag on the field. Davis Barclay is our referee tonight. Did I mention Eric Yee might be exciting to watch? That was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> He'll break one eventually tonight. He's Take fun. us through the replay here. Yeah, he's, I, I tell you, he must have ran 50 yards, but uh, he may have gained three or four maybe. But uh, yeah, eventually he'll break one. And Sometimes what you got to do when you're undersized, you just keep, keep plugging away. And Block in the back called by Davis Barclay and his crew, and we will scrimmage at about the three-yard line of Stanton. Just underway along with Vance McCullough. I'm Jeremy Beloit, Comcast staff and crew. Home of the Blue Devils, Stanton Blue Devils in blue and white, taking on the Golden Eagles of Paxson in yellow and white. First and 10, Art Gregorian under center. Oh, can't handle the snap. Beanbag is down. Who has it? Who has it? Paxson thinks they have it. No one in black and white has signaled. And there's, the referee is saying second down. The line judge has pointed in the other direction. I'm going to wait until they get together. Number 71 comes out of there. That's Richard Allen. He's the defensive tackle three technique. And I tell you what, Paxson has the ball, but our referee tonight is still signaling second down, and he's the man in the white hat. Davis Barclay overrules. It will be second down and a call very popular with our home crowd tonight. And I want to thank Vance McCullough for joining us and kind of introducing us. He's, again, the brother of one of the coaches on the Stanton staff, and uh, Dan Gadd is going to step in and do some color analysts and, and uh, Vance, we thank you very much. We'll talk to you a little bit later in the game. I enjoyed it, Jeremy. All right, second down now for the Blue Devils. Turn and hand. Lead play right up the middle. Surging across the five-yard line was the running back. That might have been Lance Bird, who was there leading rusher it was indeed Lance Bird. <laughs> Third and six they're calling it officially. Number 21 Anthony Jeanette going into the game. Skill players you'll see a lot of tonight Eric Yee, Lance Bird, Michael Johnson number 10 who will Play running back. He's more the outside guy. They like to run Bird between the tackles. Bird is in the offset eye. And Paxson daring him to run. They're going to run Bird wide. Bird cuts it up. Bird tries to break a tackle, and he gets about half a yard. It will be punting time for the Blue Devils. Three and out for their second possession in a row. And we'll welcome in Dan Gad, who uh, our regular color analyst is joining us. And Dan, uh, as you were watching, as I was talking with Vance McCullough, you saw an early feeling out process, and so far these two teams look very similar. Well, that was a decent job getting a half a yard out of that. They definitely stacked against the run on that play. Zach Bruss takes another high snap, and if I were Paxton, I would start rushing that, and he gets off a low spiral that lands across the 50. There's a flag on the play for a block in the back, and a terrific return, actually another flag on the play. Number 31 is uh, Keon Berry, and Keon Berry with his second exciting return and has looked like both times he could bust out of there. Darren Wakefield finally dragging him down, but there's a block in the back at the 49-yard line, 48-yard line of Paxton, another flag at about the 34 of Stanton. Keon Berry, exciting return yet again. Let me tell you what I know about this game so far, Jeremy. What's that? Big game. Yeah. You know why? Why is that? There's no parking within a mile of this place. <laughs> I, am, I will be amazed if my car is still here at the end of the game. I am very illegally parked right now. Dan taking one for the team tonight. Thursday night game 
uh, taking place tonight. It is Florida-Georgia weekend, and many of the high school games normally held on Friday move to Thursday. This one scheduled for Thursday, 7 p.m. Gorgeous night. Had a little rain threat earlier this afternoon, but nothing so far, and the fans are loving life, and you better believe this is a big one. They are The stands are packed, and everybody's standing. Paxton with their second possession. Under center, turn and hands to, Mar uh, to Pig, and Pig goes over to the left side for about four. And Dan, as we were introducing these two teams earlier, Paxson is going to change quarterbacks almost every play. They have Jimmy Marlowe that they like to use. He's really the spread option guy. David Lee is their um, is kind of their West Coast guy. Want to run the timing offense? It's a West Coast hybrid for Paxson versus the spread of the Blue Devils. And here is number uh, three. That's Marlowe, and Marlowe keeping it out of the spread option, which he has done twice now. Keon Berry was the tailback on that play, picks up another two yards. We'll set up third and a short four for the Eagles. Golden Eagles of Paxson in white and gold, and you, you look at the home crowd, they are enjoying themselves, Daniel. Yeah, it, like I said, there is definitely a big game atmosphere. That is the uh, first thing you'll notice when you step in the stadium tonight. There is, a, there is a big game feel to this one. One and seven, three and six, you can forget that. This is the game of the year for both teams. This ball laid down the field, looking for number 80, and juggling catch by number 80. That's Ryan Langford. Ryan Langford with an excellent catch off the throw by David Lee, who dropped it right in the bucket. Huge gain, first and goal from the nine, our first big play of the evening. That was a great throw. That was a great throw. Hit him right on the money. Gave the receiver a chance. If he'd been able to keep his feet, gave him a chance to get into the end zone here. Nice job to concentrate and find the juggling and come up with the juggling catch. If he stays on his feet, he walks into the end zone because he's well behind the defender. Folks, let me tell you about Ryan Langford. He's a wide receiver. He's a defensive back. He's their kicker. He's also a freshman. Hand off inside. There goes Pig. Pig into the end zone. Trey Pig, the big time running back being recruited by Florida International and Florida Atlantic are going to like what they saw there. Six points on the board. Packs in the early lead. Six nothing. Golden Eagles. Well, I can tell you right now, this offense is going to be a handful for to defense tonight. Uh, I've only been here for a little bit, but I've seen them line up in the eye and go up the middle. They've lined up in the spread and, and run the ball to the outside. They've thrown it deep, and then they go up the middle again. They're giving you a lot of looks tonight. Uh, defensively, you've got to be very aware of what they line up in and what they like to do out of each formation, but they've already shown you a lot tonight. It's, it, you've got to be ready for everything, obviously. Langford's kick out of the hold of Jacob Wynn is up and good. Looked pure to me, and that's a fine-looking athlete for a freshman, number 80 in white. Keep an eye on him tonight as you look at traffic to our west. Night has fallen here on the Jacksonville uh, outskirts, and we are at Stanton High School, Martin Luther King Parkway, just south of that. And you will find the campus of Stanton High School where the Comcast High School football game of the week is taking place. Let's take a look at the touchdown, Dan. Trey Pig? Yeah, simple spread option players that give, right, uh, give all the way, and they've got plenty of room up the middle. Nice blocking, easy touchdown. Coach Lou Seward in his second year for the Paxson Golden Eagles had a chance to spend some time with him before the game. I said, Coach, where do you have an advantage tonight? He said, our offensive line has played together, and we will expect them to dominate tonight. That was a huge hole. That was, yeah. that was domination up front. Back are Wakefield and Michael Johnson for the Blue Devils out of the camera range to your right, and Ryan Langford will kick from the tee on his, from the uh, 40 to your left. Well, and if you can spread a defense out, give them some different looks, do some different things, and kind of keep them off balance, you give your offensive line a little bit more of an advantage because the defense can't just come after you. They've got to kind of stay back and be ready for everything. And I, and I think that was part of that last touchdown. Nice kick handled by Johnson. He's got room up the middle. Spins and is swarmed under right at the 25-yard line. Well, Paxton did a nice job of funneling Johnson to the middle and then closing the vice on him. Blue Devil country. Stanton Blue Devils, the home folks not liking that last, last drive, but we are the home of the Blue Devils. Stanton High School, two college preparatory schools going at it tonight. And again, these two players, uh, two teams made up of players that know each other very well, both magnet programs. If you are a, a college prep, academically inclined young man and you're an athlete, you're playing at one of these two schools. Number eight, Art Gregorian, the quarterback. 
who was moved to running back due to injury, has three receivers to his left, one right. And I wouldn't be surprised if Art takes it himself. There he goes. They're going to ride Art Gregorian tonight, and there's why. He busts into the open. He's at the 50. He's got one man to beat who has an angle. I don't think he's going to get him. Inside move by Gregorian, and we've got ourselves a tie football game. No flags. 75 yards. Art Gregorian touchdown. Wow. Well, it came out. Trip to the left. I, I don't know that Paxson knew how to line up against it. They looked a little bit confused at the snap of the ball. There was some guys, a couple guys trying to communicate with each other where they should be. And the quarterback takes it and goes a distance. And there's your before and after shot. You saw the before when it was 7-0. It's now 7-6. Extra point to come. And there's the after shot. Bedlam going on on the helm sideline here. And they're enjoying themselves at Stanton. Zach Bruss, the fine kicker, is going to watch a flag thrown by the far side side judge and we may have had someone either lined up in the neutral zone and that is only a guess as someone once said musically davis barclay what do we have yep lined up in the neutral zone offsides on Paxson. and now coach kelly blunt who's also in his second year with the stanton blue devils a 3a independent playing a 2a independent in Paxson has a decision to make. They'll move that to the one and a half. Could go for two, but it looks like he will leave Zach Brust, his kicker, on the field. And attempting to tie the game is the senior kicker. That one is up. End over end, and you can tell by the crowd's reaction. Good. 7-7. Seven, seven. Does this seem like one and seven versus three and six to you? <laughs> I've been here for a few minutes. We've scored two touchdowns, so <laughs> two teams going after each other. Uh, and, I, and I'd say both offenses look pretty sharp early. I mean, they I, I don't think it's just poor defense. I think both offenses have, have made some really nice athletic plays. Just talking to Coach Kelly Blunt, and let's look at Art Gregorian. Let me, let me finish the thought. He, I said, what are you going to do if things go well tonight? He said, we want to run Art. Well, there's Art, and he's running. Yeah. Well, he's... he's not the biggest kid in the world, but he's certainly got some speed. Athleticism shows some agility. Cutting to the inside there. If you get That's the kind of guy, if you can get him out in space and give him a little bit of room to work with, he's going to cause you problems. It's a good field play, you know. But you have to, when you're in the open field like that and there's that one guy that has an angle on you, you can either try and outrun him flat uh -huh, yep. or set him up and get inside. He didn't wait on the block. He set him up, made the move. Strong move. Touchdown. Terrific play early here where just in the uh, waning moments of the first quarter, 3.05 left, and Paxson went ahead 7-0. One play later, it's 7-7. This one going back and forth. We had an unsportsmanlike penalty called on Paxson after the extra point, and thus, they will tee it up. So thus brust. There's a good-looking young lady. Going to tee it up from the opponent's 45-yard line. Kick it away into the end zone. Yes, they will. Thought we might see an onside kick there, and that is no good. Just short. <laughs> so that will be a touchback. Nice kick. It was a good kick, but when you're kicking off from the opposition's yeah. 45, you that probably helps. should nail it in the end zone. But we're out. We've, we've seen some teams that wouldn't have. We have seen that. <laughs> Comcast schedule winding down. We are in late October 2006. And bringing you a good one tonight, 7-7. Seven, seven. And who do they have in quarterback right now? David Lee, who threw the long pass to Ryan Langford on the last possession. He's got Trey Pig, the running back to his left. Looking to throw again. In route, that's behind him, almost intercepted. Was looking for Jacob Wynn, and right there was number 31, Arnie Silverberg. And Arnie Silverberg, the senior DB, who was uh, pressed into uh, action due to an injury to, I believe, Jonathan... Uh, Jonathan Breaker, yes, one of the twins, Breaker twins, Jared and Jonathan Breaker. Jonathan injured, out with a leg injury. Move to cornerback. They come out, a lot of wide receivers again, this time Marlowe at quarterback. Marlowe slips when he plants. There's a throw and wide open is number five and off to the races is Darren Wakefield. Wakefield's going to score. We've got our second big play of the first quarter. This one, 80 yards. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We've got a flag behind the play on an unnecessarily uh, un unnecessary block, and there are two flags down, and Dan, I hope that I don't know how they're going to call this continuing action or not, but as Darren Wakefield was sprinting into the end zone off of the throw from Jimmy Marlowe, uh, I'm sorry, that's uh, Tyree Myers. Tyree Myers, number five, 
was sprinting into the end zone off the throw by Jimmy Marlowe. We had a flag go down behind the play. They are going to call it good. They okay. are calling this a dead ball continuing action play. The penalty will not affect the touchdown. Well, they, that was well behind the play. Yeah, there, 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 <laughs> we didn't even see it. There was That was not even close to the play. They came with a corner blitz off the left side. I don't think anybody picked up the receiver. He was wide open for a second, and then it looked like the safety might get over there to at least make the tackle, but he hauled it in and took it into the end zone. Okay, we've got an 80-yarder, an a 75-yarder, and a big play on uh, in the passing game that set up the first touchdown. It is 13-7. As you see, the touchdown is good. The personal foul on an unnecessarily, unnecessary block well behind the play. That will force Ryan Langford to kick what would amount to a 35-yard extra point. They're going to need that water break to keep running up and down the field like this. Snap is down. Good kick. Has the distance. It is up. And it is good. No problem with the personal foul penalty. Ryan Langford bangs it through. He's caught a big pass. He's hit an extra point. And he's hit what amounts to a 35-yard field goal. It only gets one point for it. And that freshman looking good tonight. 14-7 Paxson. Don't go anywhere, folks. <laughs> this is one you may not want to blink. It's resembled an Arena League game so far. Uh, more people here. <laughs> I'm telling you what, there is still a long line outside of people trying to get into this one. It is, it's already pretty full in here, and there is a long line of people still trying to get in. This is jam-packed here tonight. It was a 7 o'clock kick for this one. And rush hour and a little rain, snarling traffic. And we are just on the outskirts of downtown Jacksonville along with Dan Gadd and our Comcast staff and crew. I'm Jeremy Beloit, your host tonight. And this is fun. Yeah. First quarter, 14-7. Great atmosphere. It's good old-fashioned high school football. I don't know that 14-7 this early is old-fashioned, but... <laughs> nah. Nah, you may have a point there. In fact, I'm, I'm going to concede that point. Langford, low kick. Johnson will handle this one again. Bounces away from him. He's going to have to go get it. Picks it up at the 5. Coming across the field. And he's slow developing. Good stiff arm at the 20. Runs through a tackle at the 24 and gets to the 25. These teams are playing hard tonight. He's pushed out of bounds by Will Chung. A defensive tackle playing on special teams. I'm sorry, he was pushed out of bounds by Brandon Campbell, rather. Brandon Campbell. Credit Markel West pushing him out there and forcing him to go outside further. I thought momentarily he'd had a, he had a little bit of room on the left side over there. But you'll see Markel West come check, in here check, and check. force him to go further outside than he wants to go and gives a couple of guys a chance to come down and make the play. Okay, trailing 14-7. It's Stanton's turn at bat again. Their head coach, Kelly Blunt, watches a play that is going to be blown dead. We're starting to talk about Kelly Blunt, a Fletcher grad, 88, I believe. He's in his second year at head coach here. He was uh, assistant coaching at Fletcher for two years before that, was a All-American senior linebacker at Eastern Kentucky and has taken over this Stanton program. They were 0-10 in his first year, 1-7, and, and playing well and have really progressed as this game went along. Stanton still playing a conference schedule. They will go to an independent schedule, play teams that are more along their lines as far as enrollment uh, next year, which will give these kids a chance to compete each and every week because when a team like this lines up against a, you know, a 4A, 5A school, that's a tall task. You've got to have an even level playing field. Gregorian. We'll take it himself again. This is the play he scored the touchdown on. This one he's going to be stopped about oh, 68 yards sooner. He goes down in the arms of number 40, Brandon Campbell, who made the tackle on the kickoff. Brandon Campbell is the outside linebacker. He is a senior. Will also play a little running back. Substitution coming in is Michael Johnson. Johnson playing both ways tonight. Stanton dressing about 35 and have some players on their offensive and defensive line starting both ways. Their coach Kelly Blunt telling me that as the game has worn on, that depth and they're having to substitute has really made a difference in the uh, later part, later stages of the game. He's looking for Eric Yee. Yee's behind the player. Yee makes the catch at the 45-yard line. Terrific play by Eric Yee. 
who got behind number 21, Zach Chartrand. Eric Yee hauls it in, first and 10, Blue Devils. Well, nice read there. They, Paxson was coming with the blitz. They had uh, single coverage on the outside over here. They read it immediately, threw it up. Nice catch. Talked about it in the open that we thought these two teams were fairly evenly matched. Both coaches telling us that, observers telling us that. Has been exactly that so far. 14-7, it's like a tennis match. 124 and running. Devils on the move. Gregorian has a little swing pass set up, has to pull it down and make something happen. Gregorian now finds it, and that is knocked loose on a pretty good hit. They want to pick up the player's number over there, getting off the ground is number 10. Number 10 for Paxson is, that's uh, Fahi, isn't it? Yeah, Jamal Fahi, who is a junior, plays a little DB and wide receiver. Gregorian's a nice little player. He, he's in a little bit of trouble there. He shows a, he shows a pump fake to get a defender off of him, cuts inside, gets, out, gets outside the pocket, and then throws a ball where only his receiver can catch it, you know, and they had a shot at it. They had a shot to make a play right there. I wasn't, you know, they, they get no yards on it, but I think that was a pretty nice play by the quarterback. You look at some of the atmosphere going on on the sidelines, high-fiving with the cheerleaders. I look at Gregorian, Dan, and I think calm. Yeah. He has a very calm demeanor about him. He's got four wide receivers and Johnson to his left. Hits his back foot. There goes the ball. Hits his receiver right in the hands and oh, dropped by Daniel Blaylock. That sophomore had a chance to go to the gate if he catches that one. The well, safety had a tough angle to beat there. Well, he's doing a really nice job of giving his receivers a chance to make a play. Again, a nice read. They gave uh, they gave him a lot of room over there. They just ran a, a little slant pass, actually more of a skinny post, and he and he hit it right right between the numbers. Couldn't complete the pass, but it was a nice throw, nice read. The Blue Devils offensive line doing a nice job as well tonight. Dan have given Gregorian good time and have blocked well for the run again good time he goes back to the middle and that is tipped nice drop by the linebacker will borders dropped out of there got his hands on it will bring up fourth and ten for the blue devils nice nice, well, nice job of being aware of where the play is he saw the the receiver going behind him and you're always taught if there's a receiver going behind you make them get the ball up over top you give the safety a chance to make the play there don't let him throw it short and he didn't he got his hands up had a shot at an interception couldn't bring it down but He's in the right place to make a play. Again, though, a fairly nice read. He, he, Gregorian is going away from the safety. They're getting either one safety or no safety. So he's reading that, and he's going to the other side. Brust to kick, hits it from his own 44, and hins a, sends a wobbler in the direction of Barry. And Dion is ripped down, or Keon, rather, is ripped down right there. Great coverage by the Blue Devils special teams. They will start at the 14-yard line, Will Paxson. We're in the press box here at the home of the Blue Devils. Our thanks to our fine host tonight. And as you look at the standing room only crowd. And they are still filing in, Daniel. Yeah. There, like I said, there is a long line of people here. This place is going to be, it, it, you look over and you see a couple empty seats around. But that's because those people are outside trying to get in. It's, it's not fast moving getting in here right now. Jimmy Marlowe, the fourth, hands off. Handing to Jamal Fahi and Fahi's short gain on the play and get him one. Blue double defense stacking him up over there. Number 20, Michael McCutcheon. Defensive tackle, one of the Blue Devils in on the play. Well, they're going to have to be able to hold their own against that offensive line as they did on that play, but they've been roughed up at times in this one already. They stack any more people in front of us, Dan. We're going to be calling this one off the monitor. <laughs> David Lee at quarterback. Tosses the pig. Pig coming right. Pig's got nothing. Pig tries to spin out of a tackle. Does. Look at that young man running. But here comes a big finish by Darren Wakefield, who lowered the boom on him and turned Pig back after a gain of about three on the play. Great play, though, by Greg Pino to keep outside contain on that play. I thought Control. you might say that. Yep, controlled his. I mean, that is, that is textbook. That is textbook right there. You control the blocker in front of you. Keep outside leverage, make that play go back inside, but you don't want to get too wide that he's got a gap to go inside on that play. He re he played that perfectly. Gave, his, gave the inside flow a chance to get over there and help him out. And a perfect start to, the, to tonight's game. It's a Comcast High School football game of the week. We are through one quarter of play. It is the visiting Paxson Golden Eagles 14. Your home standing Blue Devils 7. They're partying here. We're going to keep this party started off in the second quarter right after this short timeout on Comcast.
10. We open the second quarter with Jimmy Marlowe scrambling forward on third down. He'll be well short of the first down for Paxson, and Stanton will send Eric Yee back to return what we presume to be a punt from the Golden Eagles. Just underway, second quarter, 14-7. Paxson over Stanton. They call this one the Brain Bowl, Dan. The two college preparatory schools, magnet schools in Duval County, going at it. And a good one so far. 14-7, well played first quarter, just underway in the second quarter. Punt coming, we think. There it is. Good spiral handled by Yee. He's got a player right in his face, but spins away from him. Outside move at the 50 and gets hammered at the 46-yard line. Number 50 for Paxton Griffin Hill was one of the Golden Eagles downfield to make the tackle on Eric Yee. Well, nice job of making a spin move there to get past the initial defender. I was a little bit nervous about him bringing that ball in, mm -hmm. but he got it, and nice awareness to immediately spin and get out and, and make the initial defender miss and get upfield and get a couple extra yards. Both teams playing fearless football tonight. It has yeah, been really fun are. to watch. Talking with Paxson's head coach, Lou Seward, I said, what's your defensive philosophy? He said, we're a 4-3 team, and we blitz. He said, we live by the blitz, and we die by the blitz, but we think we're going to live more. Handing off to number 10, Fahi. And Fahi, I'm sorry, not Fahi, that's uh, uh, Michael Johnson. Johnson going over the right side for four. Well, credit, credit his offensive line for giving him those four yards. They got, a, they got a nice little push off the ball to start that one. It looked like he was going to have a lane out here to the right. Defense closed in on it a little bit, but you'll take four yards on first down. Principal here at Stanton is Deborah Lynch, the head coach Kelly Blunt. And their football team in blue. And their fans clad in all kinds of colors. It's in front of our broadcast position, Art Gregorian under center will turn. He will hand off to Bird. Bird going right up the middle. Bird runs into one of the back of one of his blockers at the 39. Will set up third and about three. Looks like everybody. Oh, no, he is not. He is still down on the field. I believe that was number 55, Thomas Holt. It is an offensive lineman who took his own uh, running back, Lance uh, a bird right in the in the back there. Lance Bird fighting forward. And the home crowd takes a seat for the first time tonight. Knowledgeable crowd, as you would imagine here at Stanton. <laughs> well, he's, he's this is almost like Duke Lake Forest. With more wins than Duke. Well, I meant basketball. But. Okay, all right, I'll, I'll go with you there. I don't, I don't think any football team wants to be compared to Duke right now. <laughs> That's a good point. Well, at least they've, they've got him turned over here. He was laying kind of awkwardly there for a while. And, and here's a look at what you're talking about, Dan. We're in the second quarter, folks, and that's the line to get in the ball yard. Yeah. You think this is a big game? Well, and you think these people all came late. No, that line has just been backed up, and they're having a tough time getting in. They tried to hit me up for admission on the way in, Dan. I had to play the Comcast card. I, I played that one as well, but they didn't help me park. And it looks like this may be a significant injury. And while they work on the young man, Thomas Holt, as both teams have taken a knee, why don't we take a short time out on Comcast and allow everyone to regroup and work on the young man. It is, we're at Stanton High School. This is your Comcast High School game of the week. We're going to run to a quick break. Paxton leading Stanton 14 to seven. Guys, would you just step down one, please? We have to be able to see. Thank you. You're okay. Could you step please, down just please. one? Thank you. When you're ready, Kobe. When I see the video, I'll, I'll go. And welcome back. Happy to report to you that Thomas Holt walked off on a, under his own power, favoring his right leg. And, his Blue Devils see third down, and they are bringing everybody as Paxson 
and they move through for a couple of yards, actually just back over the line of scrimmage, numbers 82 and 81 for Paxson combining, and that is Kenneth Butler and Chad Morrow. Chad Morrow from his left defensive end position, and Kenneth Butler, a sophomore and a junior combining on the stop. Looks like the offense might stay on the field here on the 39-yard line and fourth and a long three, maybe a short four. Well, they're going to have to come up with something different than on that play if, if Paxson runs that same defense. They kind of overloaded their left side, the offense's right side, mm -hmm. and didn't give them a chance. They uh, Stanton ended up running up the middle, which took them out of the teeth a little bit, but not enough to pick up any significant yardage. We may have a timeout signaled by Paxson, and we do. They had their uh, a combination of their special teams and defense on the field. Had a, a, a single safety date, single safety deep rather, anticipating a punt. And their head coach, uh, uh, Nathaniel Lou Seward, in his second year, called a timeout. We're going to talk it over, and we'll give uh, both teams a, a chance to revisit the situation on fourth and a short four. Not a bad place on the field to try and go for it here. But it's also not a bad play to go ahead and pin him deep. If, you, if you've got confidence in your punter that he can place it, you know, he has some, some accuracy and he can get a little bit of air under it. You know, it never, never hurts to, make, to put your defense out there playing inside the opponent's five yard line, you know, give him a chance to, to keep him pinned in there deep and then maybe get something back, and, you know, a first down later in good field position. Offense looks like they will come back out on the field. Some of the Stanton coaches stopping by to say hello. Great group to work with here at Stanton and Paxson. I think we are ready for play. It's fourth down. Gregorian with Bird to his left spreads three receivers across the field. Gregorian doesn't handle the snap. Picks it up. Is in trouble. Throws. Has Yee. Yee has the ball and he's headed down the left sideline. Forget about it. It is a touchdown. The fourth down gamble pays off. Gregorian to Bird. I'm sorry, Gregorian to Lee. 14-13. Extra point to come. Poised, Dan. I was just going to say, you mentioned that he was poised earlier. And uh, wow. It showed right there. Absolutely very, very calm. That's a play where you can panic when that ball gets away from you. But, I mean, he acted like that was planned almost. Just took it in stride, found a receiver down the left sideline. Great, great play. Nice throw. And then, hey, he lost his calm afterwards. He got a little fired up yes, trying to get this sure crowd did. into it. But that's all right. Sure did. 43-yard catch and run. Oops, we got a flag down on the extra point. That kick will not count. Brust did hit it, but the whistle sounded before play started. And let's tell you about Art Gregorian. He's 6'3", 190, senior, good size. Good size. Okay, they're now going to wave the flag off. And we're counting the extra point. We're tied. Hey, what the heck? But oh. fin finishing the thought on uh, uh, Gregorian. Their quarterback, Edwards, broke his foot about three weeks ago. They moved Gregorian from running back to quarterback. He is getting letters from NC State, Harvard, Auburn, Louisville and is being recruited as an athlete. He probably played defensive oh, yeah. back at the, ne at the next level. 6'3", can put, put more weight on that frame, and here's the young man in action. Yeah, again, I mean, snap gets away from him a little bit, but just a nice job of picking up and planting and stopping and making the defense, the defender kind of put his brakes on and slide right by, and then he just finds his receiver. He, outstanding play. I mean, this <laughs> in, a, in a short amount of game time here tonight, this kid's made several big plays already. Uh, he, he's done a nice job. He's been in trouble a couple of times and always found a way out of it. You know, he, he's, he's, he's very good at making defenders go past him, finding a way to give himself a little bit of room to work and, and, and then making a smart play with the ball afterwards. He's doing a very, very nice job of that tonight. Hey, we've got nine minutes and 10 seconds left in the second quarter. I wish we were playing five quarters tonight if they keep this up. 14-14 tie game up and down all over the field. And Zach Brust has it teed at the 40-yard line. Deep are Pig and Fahi. That will be a short kick and went out of bounds at the 37-yard line. I was kind of blocked by the column there, Dan. Did it, was that an intentional I, I'm not sure kick? if they were trying to, to put it behind the line thinking that they could recover it or if they just wanted to see one of the upbacks get it and, 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 make, and ensure that there would not be a long return. Um, it was certainly planned. I don't know if the intent was to get the ball back or just to make sure that the opponent didn't go up the sideline with it.
Well, Paxson continues the quarterback rotation. This time it will be David Lee who has been more of the passing quarterback tonight. Jimmy Marlowe also playing quarterback. They're going to scrimmage from the right hash. And this is interesting, Dan. They actually took it at, the, at where the ball went out of bounds instead of the 35. Lee turns, hands. Pig coming left. Pig's got a lot of room. Pig got, steps out of a tackle. Pig's on the run. Pig's being chased. Pig's got one man to beat. Can he do it? No. Reeled in by number five, Darren Wakefield, but not before. Uh oh, we've got a flag at the line of scrimmage. And a couple of the defensive linemen for Paxson have not moved. Huge call upcoming from Davis Barclay. Well, again, whatever it is, it looks like it would have been on the right side over there, away from the play. We've seen a couple of big plays tonight. And they're moving them back. Wow. Holding, called on the Packs and Blue Devils. They had gone from their 39 down to about the four. Well, so scratch a 50-yard-plus run. You, you got a good look at the play right there, and it certainly didn't look like there was holding on the play side. It looked like it would have been away from the play, which is a shame because the offensive line did a really nice job of getting a push off the ball on that left side and gave Pig plenty of room to get up the middle and into the secondary. That was a 55-yard run by Trey Pig. Coming back and instead of first and goal, it's going to be first and 20. Inside your own 30, that's a game changer. Yeah, that's, and again, I, to, to have it be away from the play is, is just a killer. But I'll tell you this much, Paxson. Johnny Damon in attendance tonight, <laughs> this season ending early. Actually, I think she's got the old Damon jersey on. Yeah, yeah. Both of his team's season ending early. Shotgun. This time, I believe it is Marlowe at quarterback is. They'll run that option. He's got a lot of room over here. Look out. We may do it again. Marlowe gets outside. He's got the 50. Marlowe's got one man to beat. And I tell you what, for the second play in a row, Darren Wakefield has found himself the lone defender between a, a Paxson Golden Eagle and the, and the goal line and has made the play both times. That one went from the 39 to the 40. Give him 29 yards for Jimmy Marlowe. Well, and I was I was just about before that play when after when it was being called back. I was going to say, you know, stick with it. You know, maybe I don't know if it, if that in that situation you wanted to because now it was a long yardage situation. But the left side of the offensive line is playing very well tonight. As a matter of fact, the whole offensive line, the interior is doing a great job. They're giving these guys a lot of room. And again, they had plenty of room to run it off that left side. There goes Pig. He cuts back, working his way along the line of scrimmage and downhill and a play where he never hit top speed. He gets eight and a half yards, and they are taking him away on first down. Boy, second nine or second one, you'll take that every time. Well, nice job to, to see the hole and cut back to the right and find running room. But again, for the most part, Paxson, the Paxson offensive line is pushing up the field and giving these guys chances to make some plays. Fahey and Pig on the either side of Jimmy Marlowe. It'll be Fahey. He's going to reverse it. They got a lot of room over here. Here comes Keon Berry. Berry has one man to make miss. Tries to split him. Can't do it. That was 44 and three combining on the tackle. That's Greg Thompson and Adam Gurug I'm sorry, Gurugosian. Well, nice block by Marlowe there to pick up the outside linebacker over here and give them that edge. Marlowe, it wasn't a it wasn't a crushing blow, but it was enough to slow down the, the outside contain and let them get to the outside and, and get some yardage out of it. A little end around reverse to Keon Berry. Elected to go inside. Lee looking right. Pumps and goes. Got a safety over there. It's going to be who gets to it first. Did he get a foot down? Yes, he did. Number five, Tyree Myers. Touchdown. Jeremy, credit the offensive line for that one, too. Stanton came with the blitz, and there was zero pressure. Quarterback had all day to throw the ball, and he found a wide-open receiver because there just weren't enough guys in the secondary. Again, they came with the blitz. You cannot blitz and get zero pressure. You're going to get burnt. Dan, I just made a discovery. Comcast High School Football Game of the Week. No deep. <laughs> 20 to 14. We're in the second quarter, 721 left. David Lee just put it on Tyree Myers from about 38 yards away, right in the corner of the end zone, just out of the reach of Darren Wakefield. And I, I, I kid with the no D, this has been pretty good offense on both sides of the football. Well, I, I think we're seeing playmakers make plays Absolutely. for the most part. But again, I think 
for the Paxson side, you've got to credit that offensive line. Right now, they are winning hands down. I mean, they are, like I said, they came on with the blitz on that play, and not only did they stop it, they not only did they pick up the blitz, they stonewalled it. There was zero pressure. There was nobody budging backwards. They could have run the ball on that play and, and, and had plenty of room to run it. Absolutely outstanding job. Gave him time for a double move, a pump and yeah. go by Tyree Myers, and Wakefield did all that he could to get over from his safety position. And Kelly Blunt sending his charges back out onto the field. Now trailing 21 to 14. 721 left. That one took about two minutes. Been about average today. I, how many big plays have we seen already? It, it really is turning into a track meet. Guys are running up and down the sidelines right now. Somebody get a baton out there. <laughs> Wakefield and Johnson are deep. Ryan Langford boots it. This one in the direction of Wakefield. Wakefield takes it, coming all the way across the field. Has some blocking over here if he can get to the corner, and he does. He's got the 40. Chased out of bounds and finally tackled by number 35, who is not on my roster, but Darren Wakefield, terrific return to the 46-yard line. First and 10 at the 46-yard line, and the special teams have put them in great position yet again. Big play after big play after big play. This is like one of the Rocky movies, uppercut after uppercut after <laughs> uppercut. Nice You're job a machine getting the, rock. Get, nice job getting to the outside. I really thought that Pax had started out with nice coverage on the kick. They, everybody hit the line of scrimmage at the same time on the kick. And Lance Bird nice going forward until he met number 71, Richard Allen. Richard Allen is a big man. Ripped him down in a hurry gain of about two, second and eight. Well, too many more two-yard plays, and this crowd's going to get restless. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired of this dink and dunk stuff, Dan. Go deep. Michael Johnson into the game. Number 33, Daniel Blaylock coming out. Gregorian will have Johnson to his right. Bird offset to his left. Remember, they want to run Gregorian if they can. And I think Paxson knows that. And that was a terrific play by number 81, Chad Morrow, who we have called at least three times tonight from his left defensive end position. Yeah, they, they covered the option well. They had enough, they had too many guys out here to block. The, the pitch the pitch was not there. They had that covered up. So Gregorian had to cut it up inside and nice play out there to, to, to force him inside and then also make the tackle. Third and six for the Blue Devils. Four-man front for the Golden Eagles. Same formation. Tim Klein, the receiver near side. Eric Yee to the far side. They run the option again. Fumbled on the play. Going forward, diving forward. It's still anybody's ball. Who's got it? First down, Paxson at their own 35-yard line. And, Dan, it was number 81, Chad Morrow, again, stripping that one out of there. Yeah, he's come up with a, he obviously came up with a couple of big plays on that drive right there. Got a hand in there on the ball and popped it loose. And mm. in a game that has been where offenses have really controlled it, to give one offense an extra opportunity, that could turn out to be a huge play. And it was either Dominique Perkins or Jamal Fahey coming up with that fumble recovery for the Golden Eagles. Looking at Fahey going off, and there is a future Blue Devil. Got the sippy cup working. <laughs> David Lee at quarterback. Trey Pig to his left, two receivers right, tight end left. Pig has it going right. He's got rim backside, stays play side, and is swarmed under after about a three-yard gain, second and seven for Paxson. Yeah, I don't know that he saw what he had available to the left. I think he had a little bit of room. If he made a sharp cut and got out there, he may have Danny had a lot of room. Yeah, he may have been off to the races again. <laughs> Decent gain on first down. Looks like Marlowe at quarterback is. Marlowe rolling right, looking to throw, does throw. 
just out of the outstretched hands of Tyree Myers, who had the touchdown on the last possession for the Golden Eagles. Looks like they're, Dan, they're not afraid to run or pass with either quarterback. That really keeps you off balance as a defender. Yeah, and like I said earlier, I mean, it's, it's not just run or pass. It's all the different looks they're giving them, all the different things they're doing, really keeping the defense off balance tonight. I mean, it's tough. It's tough when you can't just line up and say, okay, they're going to try and beat us up or they're going to try and do this, but you've got to be able to play both, and it takes a little bit of the aggression out of a defense. David Lee. Crowding the left side. There goes Pig. Pig is stoned immediately. Let me see who that is getting off the bottom of the pile. Is that four again? Yes, it is. That's Greg Pino who just came up and chopped down the big running back three and out after the turnover. Big stand for the Blue Devils. Well, we've already called his name a couple of times tonight. Eric Yee set to receive a punt from Ryan Langford. It is fourth and five from their own 45-yard line. That's a big stand after a turnover, Jeremy. Huge for momentum and confidence. A low kick. Yee with plenty of room. Fields it at about his 26. He's got rumor on the right sideline. Here he comes. And knocked out of bounds at about the 48-yard line. No flags on the play. Good return from Eric Yee off a low punt from Ryan Langford. You are watching the Comcast High School Football Game of the Week. That team in blue, the Stanford Blue Devils. Aptly named. Taking on the Paxson Golden Eagles. Stanton, a 3A independent. Paxson, a 2A independent. This uh, affectionately referred to as Brain Bowl. The two college preparatory magnet schools, high schools here in Jacksonville. These two teams made up of players on each squad who went to junior high school together, recruited by both programs, and ended up at one or another. And their uh, head coach, Seward, telling me this is their year. This, whole, this game is their year for both schools. Throw out the records, and you have seen that tonight. It is 21-14, 4-10 left. Gregorian throwing for Yee. Yee going to have to make a play to prevent the interception and does. Number 15, Josh Schaefer, was in terrific position. Just enough body contact between Yee and Schaefer to jar that one loose, second and 10. Nice job by Schaefer. I was actually watching that one from the beginning. He was in great position the whole way. He actually tried to push off of him, and Schaefer wouldn't budge. He stood right there, stood his ground. It was in great position to make that play. Just a fantastic atmosphere at Stanton High School tonight where the visiting stands and the home stands are packed and enthusiastic. Gregorian, pump fake, trying to set up a screen, and they have it set up. Needs a block and gets it. Here comes Bird. Bird's got the first down and more. Bird's still on his feet. Bird takes a hit finally for number three, Jimmy Marlowe, but not before he reaches the 37-yard line of Paxson. Nice conversion, nice execution of the screen. Well, and a great job by Bird to slip out of the first tackle. It was a... He had a shot to possibly go down around the first down marker. It would have been close, but he broke through a tackle and kept, stayed on his feet and got extra yardage and made it an easy first down. Nice screen setup. Get enough of a screen there. You see right there, nice job slipping that tackle, and he just fights upfield and gets more yardage. And we are going to take... Actually, we were just moving the ball onto the hash mark here from on the near sideline. Gregorian in the shotgun, Bird to his left, two receivers to either side. Gregorian going to take off right up the middle, trying to cut inside the linebacker, does. Look at him, carry defenders through for 15, give him 16 yards on the play. Art Gregorian doing that one all on his own. Gregorian is the kind of player that really makes a defense stay at home. You have got to, you have got to stay at home and, and stay on your responsibility because if you give him big gaps and give him big areas to work with, he's fast enough to take advantage of it. And you, and you see, you know, the former running back, you cannot give him lanes to go because he will, and he did right there. How does this team only have one win? I know they're, they're thin on the offensive and defensive line, and we'll watch that as the third and fourth quarter progresses. But here in the first half, has been terrific. 21-14, they trail. They're moving again. Bird with a block. Throws over the middle looking for Michael Johnson. And that one too tall from Gregorian, second and 10. Close to making a big play right there. If he can just get it down a little bit. Has hit, almost hit the receiver in stride, but just a little bit high, as you said. Had a shot. They, they, they've had some shots in the passing game tonight, clearly. Stanton in blue. Paxson in white and gold. 
locked in a good one. 2.56 remaining in the second quarter. First half of play here at Stanton High School. Three receivers left for Gregorian, empty set. This is spread at its finest. Will Gregorian get a good snap tonight? No, he will not. In this one, he has to eat. Another good decision, I think, from that young man. Takes a loss back to the 32-yard line. Nine, maybe 10 yards, and will set up a long third down, but lived to play another play. Well, it's too bad he couldn't get that snap. He may have had Bird wide open in the middle of the field for a touchdown. They went trips to the left, empty backfield, like you said. Paxson reacted and only put three defenders out on the trips, and I don't know that they were ready to stop Bird, who came streaking over the middle. That would have been interesting if he'd been able to hold on to that, hold on to that ball. 2.20 and running remaining in the first half. It is homecoming for Stanton High School tonight. I asked Coach Blunt, any of your players taking part? He said, no. I like that. Yeah. Same formation. This time he gets the snap, under pressure, takes a big hit, gets the pass off and just off the hands of number 19, Tim Melody. And Ron, I'm sorry, Chad Morrow, that left defensive end, planted Art Gregorian, but he stood in there, made the pass, and that was catchable inside the 10-yard line for the wide receiver. Yeah. Just tries to one-hand it here. It was a little bit deep for him. And look at this, a 50-yard field goal being set up for by Zach Brust. We have a timeout signal. I did not pick up who signaled for the timeout. There's a good formation by the Blue Devil cheerleaders. Wouldn't surprise me to see him kick it, kind of what Mandarin does, kick the ball out of the field goal formation, mm -hmm. kick it out of bounds, almost like a punt. Aim for one of the sidelines and see if you can cough and corner it. I'm going to tell you I disagree. Zach Brust watched him a little bit in pregame. He's got a good leg. Really? He's a soccer player and is young, along with uh, Dan Gad and Jeremy Beloit. And this is Comcast High School Game of the Week. Let's go back to Brust. Zach Brust, he's a senior. He is a soccer player. And uh, his coach telling him in direct quote, good distance. Well, we're going to find out. This will be 50. They are spotting this ball out of the hold of Gregorian right on the 40-yard line. 10 for the end zone makes it 50, and this is a big-time field goal. Somewhat different, and there is a kicking tee involved in high school. And the important part of this one might be the snap, and Dan, you're right, Paxson is dropping a player. I think that's Barry back, in fact, in, in case this ball is short. That ball is hit, and it had the distance, but was pulled left. I overswung the leg. On that occasion, went out of the back of the end zone. No good. Remains 21-14. And Paxson will have a minute and 50 to work with in a couple of timeouts. Oh, look at that. They're playing injured here tonight. <laughs> Looks like he's got some autographs on there. Ball in the end zone on a kickoff in high school. Comes to the 20-yard line. Well, that's a big advantage for the offense. David Lee, sophomore quarterback. Let's see what Coach Seward has in mind with just about a minute and a half remaining. And they're going to call timeout. Lee did, didn't like something that he saw in the sophomore signal in the timeout. That's, that's a big kid for a sophomore. It'll be yeah. interesting to see how he he develops into that body. He's He's obviously got some size already. Could be a force in years to come. Has been a force tonight, delivering several long distance connections right on time. Has been a first half of big plays, whether it was Trey Pig or Tyree Myers, Eric Yee, Art Gregorian. You know what? We've actually had three possessions in a row with no score. Shocking. Alert the media. You would, you would not have thought that the way this game started. Did we have five consecutive touchdowns? It had to have been close. I, I, I do not recall a punt in, in that streak of possessions to go back and check the play-by-play. Uh, -play. Play Stanton coming out in a prevent. 
umbrella or quarters, however you want to call it, They're playing zone across. And they fumble the snap, and this is a huge play. The beanbag's down, and they're going to call it second down. I believe Lee got back on the ball, and he did. Well, if they've got timeouts, they've got a minute, 45 to, or a minute 40 to work with here. Defensively, you may want to consider taking a timeout here and see if you can get the ball back in good field position. Maybe after one more play. Yeah. Two teams. That, Although the way they've put up points tonight. <laughs> yeah. Two Maybe teams not. that know how to work the clock should be these two and there is a, a tackled in the backfield for a loss by number 51 Danny Adamson a senior who plays on both the offensive and defensive line and now would be a great time to use that timeout and right on cue there it is minute seven remaining 107 Stanton burns one of their remaining timeouts halftime festivities for homecoming We'll follow. This is the Comcast High School Football Game of the Week. Con Comcast continuing commitment to bring you exclusive coverage of local sports. For solely for Comcast cable subscribers. And what you just saw was Jamal Fahey going down in a heap. Loss of about four more. Third and roughly 17. A nice job by Danny Adamson not to, to be tempted by the quarterback and stay with him. He shot right for the running back. Saw the ball apparently and Went after it. Nice job to bring him down in the backfield. That's a big play right there. If they can stop him here, give your offense a chance to do something before the half. Stanton comes out in a three man line again. Garagosian. Adamson. And one more defender. On the line, Lee looking left, throwing left, and bounces that one. That will stop the clock. Was looking for Ryan Langford. And square out. Clock will stop. Punting formation, 102 left. Devils will get it back with one more chance. And Eric Yee has been very effective on punt returns tonight. He will stand just inside his own territory. Anticipating the punt from Ryan Langford. They're going to have to get some people around him in a hurry. He's He's got some quicks. And number 11, James Lee, was awfully close to blocking the last punt. He is lined up on the left side or the far side on this kick. They come after him. They don't get him. Tail Dragger is going to bounce about the 42. He's going to go pick it up. He's got the 40. He's got a lot of room to his right. Uses it and is down to the 33-yard line. And the Blue Devils with 51 seconds left will have a crack at least to get in field goal range, if not taking a couple of shots at the end zone. I believe they have two timeouts remaining. Heads up play by Yee, the gunner on the left side of the offensive on the pump formation came down, didn't see the ball bounce right next to him. So once Danger cleared and went past it, he picked it up and got nice yardage up the field and gave his offense a nice shot here before the end of the half. Lance Bird will be in the backfield with his quarterback, Art Gregorian. Three receivers left, one right. They have run out of this formation tonight. This time it is pass. Looks on the square out, has it. It's got five, and with a first down is number 25, Tim Klein, a senior wide receiver. Out of that spread, they pick up about 11, first and 10. Blue Devils are moving. Well, nice job because they can get out of bounds on that play, but I think he also had a shot to hit Michael Johnson, number 10, on a little curl route right in the middle of the defense. There was nobody around him. He hits that one. They may have a play going up the middle of the field there, but uh, they'll take what they got. That one took less than eight seconds. 43.3 remaining. They're Paxson, flip Paxson, the formation. Paxson giving these receivers a lot of room to work with. Sure are. The two safeties are very deep. Gregorian looking for Klein again, has Klein again. Klein puts his shoulder down. Klein trying to get out of bounds, does not. Will be first and goal after they figure out it is a first down. They will stop the clock to move the chains. 32 seconds. Clock will stop after they set the ball for play and move the chains. And Stanton, as you would expect, is aware of that. Gregorian already has his offensive line set. Two receivers to either side. He will be under center. Yee. And Johnson left, and he will just clock it. Second down, 28.4 remaining. 
Paxton's going to have to start to get guys up a little bit closer to the line of scrimmage on these receivers. Gregorian has a lot of room to work with, especially right off the snap of the ball. He can go to his receivers right away. They're giving him a huge cushion to each side, and he's taking advantage of it right now. That's the one difference you see uh, defensively against the, the spread, which is normally in the shotgun, and you do when a player is, or the quarterback is up under center. They will sometimes concede you yeah. an extra three or four yards is the time it takes for those snap to get back from center. He, uh, the backs will have eaten up, the receivers will have eaten up that yard. There's three receivers left, Bird to his left. Good block, and he throws in the direction of Klein, threw it behind him, and Gregorian wants that one back. Yeah. And after clocking it on first down, it is now third and goal with 25.6 remaining. They trail by seven. Gregorian comes over and has a quick chat with Andy Tobin, the offensive coordinator. Timeout signaled by whom? Paxson. Paxson calls a defensive timeout. Gregorian will come back over and give me an opportunity to pass on a little more information about the Stanton coaching staff. None of their assistants are on campus, their coach telling me. They have some commitments uh, by the coaches that their coach, uh, I'm sorry, Kelly Blunt, is very proud of. Their defensive coordinator, Coach Small, Jesse Small, Played under uh, Buddy Ryan with the Eagles, their defensive coordinator, Andy Tobin, and their staff. Coach Blunt telling me uh, they've had trouble stopping the run. They played fairly well last week and just kind of ran out of gas at the end, lost by three. He told me they have yet to put together four quarters of football in the, these last two games of their season. It felt like we're winnable. They want this one tonight. They trail by seven, but are in striking range. Third and goal for Gregorian and the Blue Devils at the Paxson nine-yard line. Conceivably could run it, but the preference would be to go through the air with 25.6 remaining. Gregorian drops, looks left, has a screen set up, but oh, reading that one like a book is number 41, Lindsey Harris. The middle linebacker came up and crushed Lance Bird. Wow, way to deliver a blow. That was a big play. Never gave Bird a chance. <laughs> Bird, poor Bird probably should have just stayed where he was. He turned around and took the brunt of that one. Ooh, Bird, neat window. Mm. I like the call. You don't see this normally down in the tight red area. Yeah. And that's why, because if the linebacker reads it, it is over in a hurry. He's not dropping yeah, in coverage. Yeah, there's, there's not enough room behind him for him to get too deep into, his, into coverage or get too far outside. So he was sitting right there. They had it. They got it behind the defensive line like they wanted to, but... Obviously a linebacker waiting on that one. Zach Brust will kick out of the hold of Gregorian. Looks as if number 51, Danny Adamson, will be the short snapper. Up and good. 21-17, 9.9 remaining in our first half. And an entertaining half of football drawing to a close. Paxton hanging on to a four-point lead. But the Blue Devils and Golden Eagles you know, threatening to turn this one into a track meet. Now, these two teams, not really prolific scorers coming into this game, but they've got it going on tonight. Yeah, both offenses. Well, how many big plays have we seen? I mean, both teams really doing it with a big play. Although Stanton on that drive sets it up with their defense. They get the nice stop before the end of the half. Give, and then the, then the heads-up play by Yee on the punt return to get him in nice position. They get a couple of yards in the, or excuse me, a couple of plays in the passing game and right there in field goal range. Stanton's highest scoring output of the season so far, 20 points in a loss to Fort White and 20 in a win over Reball. Paxson has a high of 28 and 23. They've been over 23 times in two of their wins and one of their losses. They beat Yuli, Potter's House, and Trenton so far. They have, uh, this is their final game of the night for Paxton. Stanton has one more next week against UC, University Christian. Brust, that one needs that one to stay in bounds. And is that handled? No, he was out of bounds, flag is down. Where are we on the clock? 9.9, .9. nothing runs off because it was not touched in bounds. And that is a shame because that was about a half a yard 
from being the uh, Blue Devils ball with a chance to throw it in the end zone. Well, now we know what they were trying to do on that previous mm -hmm. kick. So I wonder how, how successful that's been in practice. That's a nice little play if you can get it to work. Excellent control. <laughs> it's tough enough to throw a pass to the sideline, but to time it up on a kick, <laughs> that takes some skill. That's pretty good stuff. Four-point lead, Paxson with the ball. Nine seconds left. They can choose to take a knee or they can take one more shot at putting points on the board. They spent an awful long time in the huddle, but I know that formation. You know, it's an offset eye, and Pig is back there. And they are going to throw it. Pressure from his right. Lee is going to choose to run. Lee needs to put the ball away, and that one will bring the first half to a close. And there is the horn signaling the end of the first half. Your Comcast High School Football Game of the Week, half number one in the books. And if half number two is anything like it, you're going to love it. 21-17, Paxson visiting Paxson over the Blue Devils of Stanton. And we will be back with continuing coverage exclusively for Comcast cable subscribers at your Comcast High School Football Game of the Week. Rolling on. And welcome to your Comcast High School Football Game of the Week halftime show. We bring you the Stanton Blue Devil Marching Band. Sit back and enjoy. Thank <laughs> you. 
show. And welcome back to your Comcast High School Football Game of the Week. Second half action just about to start. Paxton will receive the kickoff from Stanton. We are on the campus of Stanton Preparatory School. 21-17, and Dan Gad, uh, two explosive offenses at work in the first half. Yeah, like we said earlier, it looked like a track meet at times, but two different sources for each offense. For Stanton, I think it starts with the quarterback, Art Gregorian. Obviously, he can run and he can throw, and he's got some quick guys in Bird and, and Yee to get the ball out to, distribute it around, but it all starts with him. On the, off, on the other side of the football, it's the offensive line, and if there's one play in that first half for Paxson that would really interest me, it was a deep ball down the right sideline when they stonewalled the blitz. And if I'm Paxson going into halftime, I'd remember that play and I'd say, okay, well, we've got an advantage with our offensive line. So we're going to run the ball until they can, until they bring the blitz because that's what we really want. We want them to now blitz and play the numbers game with our receivers and, and, not, and leave them under, or shorthanded in the secondary and hit them deep again. And that kickoff that you saw moments ago will not count. I'm not sure that we were ready for play by the officials, and Dan, they're going to keep doing it. Uh, Zach Brust is going to kick it down that far sideline. They're going to try and recover it. If they, they don't, it goes out of bounds, and you'll start where the ball goes out of bounds. It's a calculated risk, I guess, well, but one that Kelly Blunt is happy to take. Well, and Paxson's not reacting to it. You see their up backs are quite a ways back behind their, their front line guys. And Dominique Perkins moving up along the far sideline. Will they kick it away now? Yes, they do. And they will kick that over the head. And that is a touchback. Taken over the shoulder by Ryan Lankford. He went into the end zone with it. And they will scrimmage from the 20. And that, if our memory serves, that will be Paxson's worst starting field position of the night. 21-17, Paxson will take over. What they're doing on offense, if you weren't with us in the first half, they're going to spread you out. They're going to run some eye. They're changing quarterbacks. They'll run that spread option. They'll throw it. And... They, we have seen a little bit of everything from the Golden Eagles tonight. Trey Pig, number two, is their big running back. David Lee is one of the quarterbacks. He has been more of the running or the throwing quarterback tonight. Lee turns, hands to Pig, and Pig is met in the backfield by one, two, now three. The first one there was number 43, who is, I'm sorry to say, not on our roster. Number 11 was also in there, James Lee. They finally finished him off, loss of almost six yards on the play. Well, you can't have a miscommunication in the backfield when the other team's bringing a blitz. They fake to Pig, and going up the middle and going a long way is Marlowe. Marlowe's got a first down and more. Finally chopped down by number 32, Lawrence Yancey, but not before he got all of the penalty yardage. A first down and is to the 40-yard line. That was a 26-yard run for a first down by Jimmy Marlowe. Well, nice job again. They Stanton was bringing pressure, but they gave him a little room to, to burst up through there, and he got all the way into the secondary before he was touched. Marlowe hands on hips on the sideline, replaced by David Lee. Lee with pig to his left, drops back. Looking on the in route, is going to run himself. He's got five, cuts to his right, will be yanked down by number 21, Anthony Jeanette. After a pickup of about eight, looked like Lee was going to get outside and get big yardage. Nice tackle by Jeanette. Nice job to tuck it down and run, though, when he did see the room. Looked like Stan's defense is a little, little out of kilter right now. They're trying to... Let's see Eric Yee still uh, two plays in a row trying to talk with the coaches to figure out where they're supposed to be. And there is shooting the gap in a hurry. Number 11, James Lee, big loss on the play of about five, maybe six. And they're going to give him forward progress to the 45-yard line. We'll bring up third and five, really only a loss of about two and a half. After all is said and done, Lee was 
coming on the snap count there. Well, the blitz has been effective other than the one long play, but they've gotten a couple plays now in the backfield, and this is, they needed to find a way to take away the running game. And obviously pressure's their answer right now. Lee looking right. Has a receiver out there and hit immediately, jarring the ball loose. Number five, Darren Wakefield. Terrific play on Ryan Langford. That ball hung just long enough for the safety Wakefield to get over there and put the hammer down. Incomplete fourth and five. Nice play by Wakefield. That is that is a big play. Nice hit. Delivered the blow right where he needed to, right, be, right below the chin. And it's tough to hold on to a ball when you're getting hammered. Cornerback Darren Wakefield, 5'9", 160 senior, plays a little bit of safety. They moved him from corner. He has interest from Georgia Southern and FAMU. They moved him from corner to safety, so he could be more of a force against the run. He was a force against the pass there. Kaboom, jars that one loose. Nice aggressive play. And we have an issue, I believe, with one of the players' equipment. Looks like the couple of Stanton players just signaled like they were going to decline a penalty. And they did. There was an ineligible receiver downfield on that pass that was declined. We did not see the flag. They were speaking to uh, one of the Stanton players. He declined the penalty, as he should. One fourth down. Twin safeties back. Greg Thompson and Eric Yee await the punt of Ryan Langford. High snap. Langford has to retreat. No pressure, though, and gets it off. He signals for a fair catch and makes it at the 20-yard line. That's the first time I've ever heard a home crowd get excited about I, a fair catch. Yeah, I missed something on that one, too. Nice play by Ryan Langford to get that one off. High snap. And like we talked about, Gregorian staying poised when, you know, there's trouble in the backfield. Nice play by Langford there to keep his head and just get rid of the ball calmly and not panic and then, you know, make a mistake back there. Art Gregorian with a, I believe it was a 75-yard touchdown run in the first quarter. That is four weeks in a row that Gregorian has had a run of 50 yards or more. That is amazing. Four receivers for Gregorian. He looks right, throws right. That is in and out of the hands after being nearly intercepted by number 40, Brandon Campbell. The receiver was able to get his hands on it, but well, dropped it. Absolutely perfect throw. He couldn't have placed that ball any better. Nice. It was a little curl route. Linebacker was actually in front of it, but he put it right over the linebacker's outstretched hands, right to the receiver. And uh, he, his receivers have had a couple of drops tonight. He'd, he'd be having a little nicer night tonight, Gregorian would, if, if his receivers would hang on to some of these. Second and 10 from their own 20-yard line. Stanton in blue. Trails 21-17 early in the third quarter. Their opening possession of the second half. Gregorian under center this time. Looking for a quick pass to the left. That ball was incomplete. Arm was going forward. Incomplete signal ruled immediately by our referee tonight, Davis Barclay. Third and 10. Blue Devils. 9-37 remaining in the third quarter. Well, they hit him as soon as he got the ball. Well-timed blitz. Paxton is committed to the blitz. If you weren't with us earlier there, head coach uh, Lucy were telling me, we live by the blitz, we die by the blitz. It's 4-3, we're going to blitz. Live by it, die by it. We hope to live a little bit more than we die. They have so far, have given up a couple of big plays. We're able to get home on that one. Four receivers again for Gregorian. Bird to his left, and we had movement by the right side of the Stanton line, and it will go from third and 10 to third and 15. I think that time the, the blitz may have been responsible for that. I think a couple guys, you know, you start to get a little nervous. You see a lot of guys around the line of scrimmage, and you start concentrating on that, not on the snap count. And I think that's what we saw there. Paxson was showing blitz early. Same formation, Bird to the left of Gregorian. Secondary spread all over the field, and Gregorian's going to keep it. He's got room to his left, drops the ball, is picked up by Paxson. Paxson's returning that for two or three yards, and they are going to have first and 10 just outside the 20-yard line of the Blue Devils. It's Gregorian's second fumble of the evening. Yeah, uh, both times he's kind of out on the outside, he's, and 
you got to be able to tuck the ball away there, keep it in, especially when you're running on the outside like that, and there's, you don't know where somebody's going to be coming from. I think that's Markel West with the strip. Pax has done a nice job of, of getting their hands right on the ball or, or on the arm and popping it out. David Lee under center. Hands to Pig. Pig steps out of one tackle, goes right, cuts back to his to his left, and surges forward for eight, maybe nine. Well, in the places where Stanton is not bringing extra guys, Paxson is winning the battle. Would love to call out the players of all the players tonight, but we have people standing in front of us in the stands, and it's difficult for us to get all of the players to you immediately. Our apologies to the young men if we're not calling them out all correctly here. Marlowe rolling left, has pressure immediately, gets out of it, but can't quite find the line of scrimmage. Will lose about a half a yard and bring up third and two for Paxson. Nice yeah. job, though, to, to slip a couple of guys, and, and it could have been worse. I yeah, mean, it could have been a much bigger loss, yeah. man. He went forward about four yards from where he was initially hit. Nice job to avoid one or two guys and, and make at least a little something out of it. Third down, Lee in at quarterback. Pig to his left, three receivers. Has really nobody open, is going to have to try and make a play himself, and is hit and spins forward, just barely gets to the line of scrimmage. And a nice tackle there by number 21, Anthony Jeanette, who got him around the hips and would not let him go. Fourth down. A nice job by the secondary. You called it right. There was nobody open. And a nice job by the guys up front to keep their lanes not give him any run, any running room where he could take off and get the easy first down. All right. Field goal attempt coming up will be in the neighborhood of 33 yards. Ryan Lankford will put his foot to it. It is up, spinning, and that one is no good. Wide right. Lankford had the distance, but pushed that one just a touch. Two Blue Devils attempting to block the kick did run into each other, and both are still down in the neighborhood of where the placement was made. One of them is up. That was Jeanette, number 21, who was involved in the stop on third down. Along with Dan Gadd and our Comcast staff and crew, I'm Jeremy Beloit. This is the Comcast High School Football Game of the Week. We come to you from the campus of Stanton High School, where the Paxson Golden Eagles lead the Stanton Blue Devils 21-17, 7.31 left in the third quarter. Good to see that number seven, Jared Breaker, one of the twins, sophomore is up and making his way off the field under his own power. Dan, all offense from late in the first, early in the second. The defenses have really kind of bucked up and bowed their backs somewhat since then. Yeah, well, Stanton's doing it with the blitz. They're getting guys in the backfield. And then except on that last play where they were able to back off a little bit and had nice coverage in the secondary. For, for Paxson, it's been a couple of turnovers. Of the two fumbles by Gregorian have given their offense the ball back. Bird and Gregorian. Gregorian finds Yee. Yee wants to make out a break out of a tackle. Is reeled in finally at the 47-yard line. Excellent throw and catch brought down by Dominique Perkins, but not before Yee gets into uh, Paxson territory. Nice throw by Gregorian. Great catch by Yee. Well, and again, he had plenty of room to get up the field to catch that skinny post. Streaking right in front of the safety there. And that's what you want to run against the blitz. Yeah. Make those safeties come up and play you. He goes far left, one of four receivers. Bird, the solo back, will get his opportunity. Right up the middle, cannot step out of the tackle. Did that ball come loose? They are ruling him down. Number 71, Richard Allen, from his defensive tackle position, made the tackle on Bird. Bird was able to regain his own fumble. No gain on the play, second and 10. That name sounds familiar to you. Lance Bird, he is the youngest of three Bird brothers. One playing at First Coast, 
Andre Bird at Bowles, one of the leading rushers in our area. Good future for this young man and a good student, I understand, as well. Second and 10, Gregorian looking right. He's got a, a receiver roll by himself, and oh my goodness, Michael Johnson. It was a touch behind him, but went right through the hands of number 10. And Dan, he had a chance to go a long way there. Yeah, the ball was a little bit behind him, but he had a shot to catch it. It hit him in both hands. Again, though, they these guys have a plenty. If they run, those little curls and the skinny posts are, are going to hurt this team right now because they're lining up with four wide receivers, mm -hmm. and Paxson's only responding with four guys in the secondary in coverage, really. So they're giving them a lot of room to work the middle of the field yeah. on curls and posts. The slot receivers are open on every play early. Gregorian running for his life, gets it away, cannot get it to his receiver, but bring up fourth down. Going to get him with a little late did, hit out of bounds. Get a, did we get a flag? Yep. Yes, the flag is down. They, they rough Gregorian out of bounds. That will move the ball inside the 35-yard line and give Stanton a first and 10. Big mistake. Big that mistake is, for Paxson. That is a huge turnaround. And this crowd will erupt because I don't think many people picked up the flag. Yeah, they were going to have to punt and give them an automatic first down. It was going to be fourth down. It was going to be fourth and long. Instead, it will be first and 10 at the 33. And Davis Barclay picking that one up along the near sideline. And Stanton trailing by four. Looking for their first lead in tonight's game. They are 33 yards away from doing so. And, Dan, your call is correct. The slot receivers in that four-wide receiver formation, I, I wouldn't go away from I it. I would run curls with my slot receivers until they stop it. Pressure right up the middle. Gregorian running for his life again. Gets away. He's got back to the line of scrimmage and maybe a half yard more. And he was... Uh, gifted just to get yeah. there well I, I it didn't look like he was going to get out of there for a while he made that play with his legs the one thing they're giving you with this blitz you're not going to have a whole lot of time to throw but the way they're backing off your receivers you do have the quick throw so uh, as we were saying if you come out twins on both sides they're giving you the slot receiver right away and, and, and you're going to complete you're going to take the blitz away from them if you continue to hit it absolutely the four um, defensive backs for Paxson are being asked to cover a lot of space. And the same formation again, Dan. No, it's actually no back, trips to the right. And they throw in the neighborhood of Johnson. Johnson makes the catch. Johnson stretches forward inside the 25. He will be about a yard, yard and a half short. Third down coming up for Stanton. Michael Johnson coming all the way across. Gregorian able to find him. Third down, Gregorian and Bird. They will spread him. What do you like here? He's going to go up under center. Smells like a run. Yeah. Could be a draw. There it is. And he is not going to get there. Will be stopped a good yard and a half short. Score is 21-17, 449. They have a terrific kicker in Zach Brust. But I think a field goal is not what is on the mind of Kelly Blunt. Well, it's, it's, it's certainly an option with this much time left to go in the game. But I offense, think you're right. Offense coming back onto the field. They do, however, need to pick up the pace. Bird goes out. Actually, now we've got two players going out. Got to hurry. Yeah, they, Back judge has his hands up, and they've elected to call timeout. Yeah, they were they were running a little late on that play. If you're unfamiliar, the back judge is the one charged with keeping the play clock in high school football. And when his hand goes up, we are late in the play clock, and they were still getting set. I think had some substitution questions on uh, the near sideline. They wanted one more receiver on the field. Fourth down. Short two, 4-11 left, 21-17 Paxson. Uh, we are on the campus of Stanton High School. As you can see, the students having a big time standing on the near sideline. Band working hard at halftime. I hope you were able to enjoy that. They did a great job entertaining the crowd. And our Comcast staff and crew here to bring it all to you. Exclusive coverage of the local Jacksonville area sports, high school and otherwise. 
exclusively for Comcast cable subscribers all over the First Coast. Clay, St. John's, Nassau, Duval. We cover them all for you. Now, what do we have going on here? Barclay ascending. Michael Johnson off the field with some sort of uniform violation. I, he might have blood or he's got something going on that he... Yeah, he's going to wash something yeah, off. Yeah, he's going to wash some blood off. Offset eye on fourth down. They hand to Bird. Bird's got it in more. Bird splits the safeties and is dragged down by number three, Jimmy Marlowe. But not before he will set up first and 10 at about the 11-yard line. And the good news is he went down outside of the 10. They will be able to pick up a first down inside. Yeah, nice run. They lined the fullback up away from the tight end on the weak side. And it's just all, it's basically an ISO play right up the middle, a little bit off to the left. And big yardage. I, I, I think they caught Pax's defense overreacting to the tight end on, the, on their right side. Same play to the other side. Bird again, they try and pull the ball out of there. We've got a flag down. Looks like it could be holding. And we've got a Paxton player holding his ankle. That's number 41, Lindsey Harris, their fine middle linebacker. And I'm wondering the way he reacted if he wasn't chopped. Well, Referee threw the flag right at that play. Lance Bird did a nice job of, of uh, holding on to the ball, but I'm not sure if you picked it up, Dan, but Lindsey Harris was in a heap with yeah. one of the offensive linemen. Well, and I remember it was Harris that made the great play on the screen play down here earlier. If he goes out and they're able to, to get the ball back into, into the red zone after this penalty, it'd be interesting to see how his replacement handles a screen pass. Because if it weren't for him, that, that goes into the end zone most likely. Holding was the indication. Moves the ball back outside the 20 yard line. Roughly the 22. First down is available just inside the two-yard line. Gregorian and Bird. Low snap again. Bird makes a block. They try and throw the corner pattern. I think he overthrew it and happened to find his receiver number 25, Tim Klein. Dan, I think he overthrew the out and, and found Klein on his knees. And second down from the six. Yeah, I think you might be right. I think you're right. I think it was a high throw, but... Had a second, a second receiver there to make the catch. Nice read, though. Paxson comes up. They had the receiver to the right double teamed. So they throw to the left, and they, they have a couple guys over there. Either one of them could have made that catch. Third down. Hands to Bird. Bird's got a lot of eagles staring him right in the face, but he busts out of that. Did he get in the end zone? He did. How in the heck did Lance Bird get out of that? It was one on four, a yard behind the line of scrimmage. He went to his left, backed up, and found Pater. Stanton takes their first lead of the night here in the third quarter. I can't wait to see this replay. He, he got the ball and immediately was tripped up in the backfield. He got, uh, I think the grass got him a little bit, and I thought for sure he was going down. I, he made it to the line of scrimmage. I didn't think he was going to get much past that. And the next thing we know, we see him pop into the end zone. There was a pile up on the left side. Houdini. Up and through. Guess I should update that reference. Flag on the play again post extra point. We've got some pushing and shoving. Have another flag out. This one could end up going both ways. And with 250 left. I believe that's three extra points now that have had a that have been affected by a penalty. 24-21. Stanton has taken the lead on Paxson for the first time as a light rain has started to fall. We're in Jacksonville. Referees are gathering and talking about the penalties as the celebration goes on. Either that, on the or, they're wondering, either that or they're wondering how Bird got into the end zone too. Okay, the extra point is good. A dead ball personal foul going uh, that away. And I'm going to guess he's got a dead ball personal foul going uh, that away. And we're going to offset those and kick from where we normally do, 40-yard line. And we get to figure out if Zach Bruss can drop it in somebody's bread basket along the far sideline again. <laughs> they have not been with us tonight. The place kicker, Zach Bruss, has an excellent touch along the sideline, although this time he is moving more towards the middle of the field where he has kicked it deep from. 
I, I got to uh, think they're that's... going bananas on the home sideline. <laughs> go bananas. Go, go bananas. Ag. Always observant. I, I got to believe <laughs> that that little dump pass they run on the kickoff is going to be tough when the other team knows it's coming. <laughs> And they have shifted in that direction, and Brust is setting up that like he's going to kick this one deep. And trying to pick up the number of the deep player. I think that's Pig. It is. Pig will catch it right at the goal line, but he stepped in the end zone, and that is a touchback for the second time in a row. And Zach Brust is a tremendous weapon for this Blue Devil team tonight. He has put it along the sideline when they've asked him to. He's put it in the end zone twice and has kicked a field goal, all of which... Well, we've got another flag now. Actually, we've got two flags now. And boys, line up right. <laughs> they got it now, sort of. <laughs> it's college prep. You knew that's got it right. Can you read that, Jeremy? Not Nats. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. It's trained in Chinese. Well, we've had no shortage well, we've got of a personal foul and an ejection. Wow, I, I, folks, I did not see that one. I, I, did I saw the either. flags later. We were following the ball that went down by the end zone, but a player has been ejected. Well, it, it, could it have been somebody that was involved on the play before and two personal fouls? They said that's enough. And number 44 is coming off the field like he is the one that has been ejected, and that's well, Adam he's, Garagosian. He's still on the sideline. I think he's going to be required to leave the sideline completely. And I'm speculating that that was Gurigosian, but he is reacting like it was indeed him that was, or he that was ejected. And that's a big loss for a team that's only dressing 35 players to begin with. One of their defensive starters out of the game for the rest of the way. 2.50 left in the third quarter, offset eye, hard count, and I think David Lee just made this first and five instead of first and ten. Well, that's one way you, you and slow as his down reward, a blitz. <laughs> as his reward, he'll watch first down from the from the sidelines. Dan, you were saying that's you know, I, it, it, you know you've got you've got a team in Stanton that has that has really been blitzing a lot, especially here in the second half. Well, go on too. Get those guys. Take a little bit of their aggression away. You know, maybe go misdirection, screen passes, that kind of thing. But certainly, they were biting on that. They had, they could have called any one of three guys offsides on that one. Offsides is indicated. Marlowe in at quarterback. Two receivers right, two backs with him. Going to keep it himself. Little dart play, little draw. There goes Marlowe stepping out of a tackle. Marlowe's got a lot of room. Marlowe finally brought down as he crosses the 40-yard line by number three, Greg Thompson. And the cornerback with a saving tackle there after the big run by Jimmy Marlowe. They've had several runs tonight right up the middle. Just letting the quarterback show the give there and then just follow lead blocker. And, and obviously they're, they've got nice blocking up the middle. I mean, he went deep into the secondary before he was, you know, really touched. Eye formation now. Lee offset eye. Lee under center. Hands to Pig. Pig looked like he was confused again on which way to go. Short gain on the play of about a yard and a half, maybe two for Trey Pig. I think they're going to just start to let those big boys up front start to dictate this game a little bit. They've been very effective with it. You know what we haven't done, Dan, is call those guys out. Kyle Sherman at right guard, Mike Hamill at right tackle, right tackle rather. Tony Benzo is the center. Sam Wisant, Sam Wisen, and J.C. DeMeo make up the offensive line for the Golden Eagles. Marlowe looking to throw. Sidearms that, and it's picked off. There goes James Lee back the other way. Lee backpedaling across his own 35 to the 36. The first turnover of the, uh, turnover of the night for Paxson is an interception from James Lee of Jimmy Marlowe. I think Stanton's defense is getting into a little bit of a guessing game here in the second half, and they're winning it. They've, they've blitzed on run plays and they've backed off on passing plays. If you're packs and you want to be, you want it to be the opposite way. This time they did not come with the blitz. They let the linebackers go back into pass coverage. They had guys all over the place. Nice job getting in front of that route and picking it off. And right now they're winning the guessing game. Marlowe dropped that one down. 
and as a result has put Stanton in a position to where they're playing tonight for the first time with the lead and the ball. Looking for Klein and has him. Out route, picks up about seven, second and three. Gregorian to Klein, and Dan, that is there all night long. Yeah, and what a throw, too. Threw a strike, caught, hit his receiver in stride. The play is there, and, it, and it's, it's still, it can be a tough throw to make, but he hit him right in stride. Nice throw. Along with Dan Gatt, I'm Jeremy Beloit. You're watching the Comcast High School Game of the Week. 124 left in the third. Stanton, Blue Devils in blue with the ball. Lead 24-21 over the Paxson Golden Eagles. It is the two college preparatory magnet schools in Duval County going at it. They both want to win this one badly. Second and three. They're going to turn and hand off. Going left is Johnson. Johnson stretches that ball out. He hit the ground before the ball popped out. We'll have a first down. After a collective sigh is released on the home sideline, first and ten, and Michael Johnson may not see the ball again if he's going to do that with it. Well, he stretched for it, and the ground caused a fumble here. I think you'll see he's got it as he's going down, and he hits it right there, and the ground pops it out. So I, that, that was a pretty easy, easy call for the officials. 47-yard line of Stanton is where we will scrimmage first and ten. Here we go. This is the this is the look right here. They got twins on both sides, and the slots have all kinds of room to work with. And they do a double move, and they throw it. Eesh. Wow! The first time they have covered that all night. They released Dan. They released the outside receiver to the safety, uh -huh. and had the corner drop off, and they almost got the turnover. They they were baiting them, I believe. Yeah, it was a good read. I almost got. You're right. He almost got this. He nice drive to the football. Got their feet tangled, was looking for Klein again. And what they've been doing, it's been out of your picture for most of the night, against that four wide receiver set with twins on either side, they've been covering with the cornerbacks on the outside receiver and just playing the safeties about, what, 12 to 15 yards they're, they're off. They're deep, yeah. And now they have gone to three receivers on one side. Low snap again. Gregorian throws, and the play was there early, and that's going to be pass interference. Unfortunately, it was unnecessary. It'll be called on Jimmy Marlowe, who was in coverage. He did make contact early, but that ball was off target due to pressure. Yeah. Break for the Blue Devils there. They'll pick up a first down. Yeah, that one very easily could have been called uncatchable. Um, actually, I was surprised to see the flags come out, but both referees it was were unanimous, on the same page. Yeah. Pass interference. Makes it a first down. He hit him fairly late too. I, I don't think that you know that he really disrupted the receiver from getting to the ball. That one was one that could have gone either way. The home Blue Devils get the benefit of the doubt. Johnson at tailback, Bird at the up back. Johnson has it going right, surges forward, good blocking on the right side yeah. by his. Offensive lineman, offensive lineman Mates and Markel West made the tackle for Paxson. That was good blocking. I didn't think when they when the ball was snapped that they'd have much over there, but the credit the fullback and the guys on the right side of that line to give the running back room to get up and, and make something nice out of that play. Almost six yards on it. Second down. Stanton facing a five-man front. Linebackers crowding the gaps. Looking deep in the neighborhood of number 19, Tim Milady. And that is a second one through the hands here on the second half. Gregorian doing a nice job of throwing that one back shoulder yeah. on what was what amounts to a fade stop. Well, there's just been too many passes tonight that Stanton guys, Stanton receivers have gotten hands on and not come up with. It's it's starting to really slow the offense down a little bit. It is your high school football game of the week as we look at the replay here. Gets two hands on it. Now it's, it's not, you know, in the numbers, but we've seen him drop some of the numbers tonight, too. They, they've scored 10 points here tonight in the second half. Kind of wonder how this offense would be doing if these guys were gripping these balls a little bit. And this now the best scoring output of the year for the Blue Devils. And we will uh, take one short time out. Fourth quarter, exciting conclusion to come. Don't go anywhere. 24-21 Stanton. Fourth quarter coming up right after this.
And welcome back. Your Comcast High School Football Game of the Week rolling on. Stanton at home leading Paxson. Second down. I'm sorry, third down to open the fourth quarter. There goes Johnson surging forward with the benefit of his offensive line, and he will pick up a first down thanks to a big surge. I believe that was number 79 that was helping him along. And I don't have 79 on my roster on the, along the offensive line, but he's a big kid, yeah, got a big is. push. First down. Uh, he towers above everybody else in that huddle. And it had been Paxson that was running the ball and getting the push on the offensive line for most of the night. But here on this drive, Stan has gotten a couple of big plays, just running it off to the to the left side. Dan Johnson wasn't going to make that. He was not going to make that, and he got a good push in his yeah. off in the back by his offensive lineman. Took him inside the 30-yard line and picked up the first down. Points now at a premium. Fourth quarter. Here comes the blitz again. Gregorian going to try and burn it. He's got room. Gregorian steps to the outside. Nice little dip movement back to the outside again. He stops. He spins. He twists. He's out of bounds. Finally thrown out by number 40, Will Chung. But give Gregorian 15 more yards and a first down, and the Blue Devils got it going on. Well, nice job by Gregorian just to be patient on that play and let the defense collapse inside a little bit before he takes it to the outside. He lets the corners or the uh, the outside linebackers and ends come in a little bit and just stands in the backfield. And then when he has it, he takes off. Nice job to be patient and let that play develop. Yee and Johnson right. Milady left. Bird, the deep back, will get the carry. He'll go off his right side. Stumble forward for about three. Make it two, second and eight. Yeah, they keep moving that stick forward, and let's go back with three. Second and seven coming up for Paxson. I'm nice. sorry, coming up for Stanton. Nice job by the Paxson defense to close it, that gap up a little bit. When the play initially, when the ball was snapped, there was a wide hole off to the right side there. It looked like he may be able to shoot through there and get big yardage. Paxson desperate not to fall down two scores. They trail by three. Gregorian and the Blue Devils, four wide receivers. And closing in on points here in the fourth quarter. That one he was looking for Klein again, overthrew him on the out route. Had to be careful. Close coverage brings up third down. Well, they pretty much went one-on-one -on -one with all the receivers over there, but nice coverage. For every guy in blue, there was a guy in yellow and black, or excuse me, in gold and black, right on him. Drew Bledsoe would have tried to make that pass. 10-38, 24-21, third down and seven. Johnson will be the only back with Gregorian. Wouldn't surprise to see Gregorian keep this one here. Low snap again. They run the option. There goes Gregorian. They're all over it. Paxton sniffed that one out. And if you give credit to any number of Eagles, but number 81, Chad Morrow. Yeah was on the bottom of that pile. Uh, he had been, plenty of help. He's made a couple of plays on that on that spread option play tonight. He's, he's hit Gregorian a couple times, and he was one of the guys that caused a fumble earlier in this game. Zach Brust, it will go bananas for you if you split the uprights here. Did I say bananas and split? Oh, sorry. Oh, Sounded there. contrived. Brust with a 29-yard field goal attempt. Down, up, hammered. And they don't like it. I don't know where it missed. Well, it certainly wasn't short. Well, there was a brief discussion amongst the officials, and they waved that one off. No good. Remains 24-21. Credit the Paxson defense. They bent, but they did not break. And they give their offense the ball back. 9-51, trailing only by three. Now, the Paxson offense, Dan, has been st stalled for a long time. What do they need to do? They need to guess right. Uh, <laughs> I think that their offensive line, when it's one-on-one, -on -one, they're doing a nice job. And they've, they've done a nice job picking up the blitz on passing plays. The problem has been they're running into the blitz and throwing when the guys are back off. Trey Pig right up the middle. Trey Pig hops over a defender and picks up nine yards on first down. If I had to guess, Trey Pig is going to see a lot of the pigskin on this possession. Wholesale substitutions. I can tell you that more people came in than went out. I guess I missed a couple of receivers going off. Let's see if they have changed quarterbacks. Yes, it is now Marlowe. Marlowe with Pig and Fahey. Option. Nice. Marlowe, first down, picks up six to the 35-yard line of Paxson. First down, move those chains. Nice job finding a little seam in there. 
Very patient on yes, the option. Yes, I was just about yeah, the same thing. He's, he's, there can be a tendency to, to rush things a little bit, but with the option, you want to make your reads. Right, he, he kind of set baited that guy and then cut it inside of him. You want to catch defenders on the option out of control, and that's what he did right there. Boy, and Pig was met by just a wall of blue number. Uh, well, I said earlier that Adam Kurigosian was asked to leave the ball game. That must not be the case because he was in there making the tackle. That, yeah, was he is out there. that was speculation on my part on the extra point earlier in the half. There was a player thrown out. We did not pick up the number. Marlowe hands to Pig. Pig going left. Pig is high load and waylaid. Catching him low was Jared Breaker. Catching him high might have been number 11, James Lee. Well, you know, I'd said that they've been playing a guessing game, but you also got to credit the Stanton defense because they are tackling better now. They are when, when guys get there, they are now making the tackle and they're making nice hits. Where before in the game, you'd see missed tackles and, and guys breaking off tackles and getting more yardage. And you, you know, we haven't seen that as much and let me since get, the first or second quarter. Let me get that right. That was Zach Chartran who finished off the tackle. He was the one that was old laid on the play before, so nice redemption. Lee looking deep. Lee has a couple of receivers down here and making the go. Oh, not making the catch is number five, Darren Wakefield. I'm sorry, uh, not five, Wakefield. That's Myers who caught the touchdown in the first half. And he flat dropped that one. Well, I'll tell you what, he was wide open too. I think Arnie Silverberg got a little turned around. It looked initially like he was in pretty good position, but when the ball went in the air, he got turned around and, and allowed the receiver to get behind him. And boy, that would have been, that would have gone for big, big yardage. And Greg Thompson got in there and made some contact late. I think it was already coming out of the hands of Tyree Myers, and that's a huge drop. Forces a punt, and Eric Yee, if everything goes as planned, will get a chance to show his wares in the punt return game. Kick, and this one will go out of bounds in a hurry. That was off the side of the foot of Ryan Lankford, his worst effort of, worst effort of the night, and they are marking that at the 43-yard line of Stanton, and they will take that and run. Fourth quarter, 7.37 remaining, and Stanton with the opportunity to really seize control of tonight's game. They have trailed for the majority of it, took the lead in the third quarter, and have had Paxson stalled at 21 for a long time. Paxson with nothing on the board in the second half. Art Gregorian, he's their horse. He takes the snap. He hands to Bird. Bird is eaten by number 51, James Duncan, from his nose guard position. Duncan just absolutely threw him down. Nice play. It looked like he was going to have room over here on the left side if he could get there. Wrapped him up and put him down. Real quick like. Yeah. Yeah, there was no break in that tackle. No. 7-13 and running. Second and 12. Big, big series for the Paxson defense, obviously. Especially when the running game, you want that to still be part of your offense. You'd like a quick stop here, so you still have the option to run the football. They're bouncing on the near sidelines here, enjoying what they're seeing. They will turn and hand and with room and through the middle and with a first down and still going is number 10, Michael Johnson. And Mike Johnson had two hands around that football as he went through the middle, secured it nicely down to the 41-yard line of Paxson. Boy, and they are really starting to run the ball well in the middle of the field. I mean, right up the middle, they're getting big yardage now here in the second half. And, you know, you talked earlier about Stanton being the team that might that might have trouble with depth and start to wear down here, but it almost looks like it's the reverse. Stanton now starting to get big yardage running the football up the middle of the field. Nice job of covering it up once he got into traffic. Same formation, Bird the up back, Johnson the tailback. They're going to give it to Bird on the quick hitter, and he is turned away in a hurry, and let me get the number there. That's 51. 51 is James Duncan, his second nice play on this drive. He submarined and got Bird's thighs and would not let him go. Second and 11, loss of one on that play. Clock running at six minutes, 24-21. The home Blue Devils of Stanton over the visiting Pax and Eagles and what they like to refer to as the Brain Bowl. And a whole lot of guts tonight, though. 
Johnson surging forward, gets about three, will bring up third and eight for Stanton in what will be a very important opportunity to third down conversion uh, they're, they're for the Blue Devils. They're determined now not to let Stanton just run the ball up the middle like that anymore. They brought just about everybody on that play, and they showed it right from the beginning. There was no, <laughs> they weren't trying to trick anybody. They showed immediately what they were going to do. They may, Stanton may have to throw the ball on this down. I would throw it, and I would throw a post. I'll take the curl. Three receivers right, one left. Dan, judging from the offensive line, I think they might run it. They will run it, tossing it to Johnson. Johnson tries to turn it up. There's nothing there. Paxton was intent on shutting down the run on that play, and they did so with authority. Brings up fourth down and about six for Stanton. However, it will be inside the 40-yard line, and it looks like Coach Kelly Blunt is thinking about going for this. I think he's going to let the clock run down. Nope, has changed his mind. Going to punt. Gregorian was about to go on the field, and he changed his mind. I watched him turn around and say, punt team. I think this is a smart call. I do, too. I, mean, I agree. Obviously, you're going to be tempted in this position, but, you know, with a, with a lead, if you can pin them down here, you know, we've seen an offense that has not been clicking on all cylinders here in the second half, and to make them go more than 80 yards, is, it's going to be tough on that offense. Zach, oh, and look at this. There's a flag down. It is a fake thrown, and it is, oh, oh. Nearly intercepted by Jimmy Marlowe, but let's check the flag. There was a flag thrown by the umpire. He took his eyes off the ball and started seeing if he was going to get hit immediately. And if he holds on to that one, now depending on what the flag is, but if he holds on to that one and the flag's not against them, he's got room up the sideline. And credit to both coaches there. Kelly Blunt selling the fact that he was going to make a decision to punt there. Illegal procedure called. Declined, Paxson takes over. And credit to Seward as well. Coach Seward leaving his defense on the field, and they uh, read that one nicely. That could have been an even bigger play for Paxson, but they will take over on downs at their own 37 yard line. 4 10 left on the clock. They trail by three. James Lee, the throwing quarterback. Plenty of time. Will turn and hand to Pig. Pig's got room off the left side. Pig's got 10. He's got 15 and was a shoestring away from going to the house. Gets to the 47-yard line of Stanton, and the Paxton sideline is energized. When their offense has been effective tonight, it's been because the offensive line has given their running backs a chance to get into the secondary before they're hit. First and 10. This time it's Marlowe. Marlowe going over the middle, has his receiver. That's Barry. Barry steps out of a tackle and another one. He's on the run of the 20, is hit from behind and dragged down at the 10. Tackle made by number five, Darren Wakefield. First and goal, and Wakefield is injured. But Keon Barry took the in route from Marlowe, and Keon Barry has his team in really good shape. He's coming off a banged up ankle and Dan take us through the replay well, crossing pattern almost went. Yeah, credit credit the throw by Marlowe. Hits his man right in stride, gives him a chance to, to make a play and run with it. And then a nice play just to break a couple of tackles, stay on his feet. Can't, at this stage of the game, you can't have arm tackles and he, he made him pay. He, you got to wrap up there. He breaks a couple tackles and takes it up the field. Yeah, Jared Breaker had an opportunity, did not wrap up. And you see that so many times late in the game. Players will try and throw a shoulder, make a body tackle. Yeah. And that sprung Keon Berry all the way down inside the five-yard line. And this is still anybody's ball game, along with Dan Gadd and our Comcast staff and crew. I'm Jeremy Beloit, your host, and we are watching, or you are watching, and we are enjoying exclusive coverage for Comcast cable subscribers here all over the First Coast. It's Stanton and Paxson tonight. Stanton, a... 3A independent, Paxson a 2A independent. Paxson comes in three and six, Stanton one and seven. You can forget all that. This is the game that both teams circle every year. These two teams know each other well. They play each other every year. This is their bowl game. And it has been all that you wanted and more. It's 24-21, the home Blue Devils, 341 left on the clock, but Paxson after sniffing out a fake punt on fourth down in their own territory, 
has marched, and I mean marched quickly, down to I'm trying to see exactly where the ball is placed. That might be the six-yard line. Uh, it, this has been this has been a really really good game. But both teams have you could, have played with a lot of energy tonight. And there's going to be one very elated team at the end of this one. And there's going to be a crushed team at the end of this one. And there's going to be a coach that's going to have a, a little talking to do to his team and probably get their heads back up. Obviously, a lot of intensity in this one. Both teams have really, really put on a show tonight. The and injured player Wakefield getting up, making his way off. That might be a cramp. He ran a long way to come from behind and drag down Keon Berry. And the players and fans respectfully taking a seat or a knee while the injured player was down. And when he got up, they responded likewise. Great, great atmosphere for a football game. Jackson on the north side. Looks like, looks like Stanton's brought a little bit of size into the game on the defensive line. Going to try and dig in in the trenches down here. Number 75, Steve Salem, among them. Here we have now a timeout after all that taken by Kelly Blunt and Stanton Blue Devil. I think he might have wanted to see the formation that Paxson showed, saw it, and then defensively takes a timeout. All right, let's reset it. 3.41 left, fourth quarter. Stanton has trailed the majority of the game. They took the lead here in the second half and have held on. Paxson has not scored since the second quarter, 24-21, but Paxson has it first and goal just outside of the five-yard line of the Blue Devils. Dan, where are they going with this? Do you ride the big horse pig or do you... Use well, your use your mobility at quarterback to your advantage. I think you may use your mo your mobility here. They, like I said, Stanton has brought in a bigger defensive group. I, I think you still I think you still have confidence in your offensive line, but you may want to try and get it out on the perimeter of that bigger group. See if you can work the edge a little bit here. James Lee is the quarterback. I'm sorry, David Lee is the quarterback. He will turn and hand to Trey Pig, and Pig has stood up immediately and smashed down with authority. The Blue Devil defense was not interested in Trey Pig whatsoever. Well, Second they, down goal. Stanton went with a basically a goal line look there. And Paxson tried to run right at it. Yeah. I think I think if you can get a quick play action and throw a little pop pass behind him, they're bringing everybody around the line of scrimmage and they're leaving the middle of the field wide open. See if you can get a back or a tight end into the secondary. Marlowe, Pig, and Fahi, they tried to run that dart play. And let me get that number. Is that 58 getting off the bottom of the pile? I think it's 56. I see a 56, but, 56, but I thought it might have been 58 or 51. At any rate, number 56 is Ryan Hargrove. 51 was Danny Adamson. What? Yeah, they're saying it was Adams or uh, Ryan Hargrove, 56. He got into the feet of Marlowe, and that play was over in a hurry. Lee, the throwing quarterback, in the gun. Field goal ties it, touchdown puts him ahead. He got pressure. He throws to Langford. Langford's going to have to make four men miss, cannot do it. That play is over at the nine-yard line. Clock is running, 227. Field goal attempt to come would tie the football game. Outstanding play by a Stanton defensive unit that seemed to have guys everywhere. They brought pressure, so the quarterback had to get rid of it. And then when he did, there were enough guys, there were a lot of guys around the football and it didn't give him a chance to get up, in the, up the field and into the end zone. Dan, let me point this out. Brian Langford, who made the catch and just took a hit from three Blue Devils, now has to line up as a kicker and try and split the uprights. Good point. 157 and running, 156. Three points down is Paxson. That kick is up. We got it. That cup is good. Tie football game, 24-24, and Ryan Langford jogs off, and the freshman's like, what, you think I was going to miss it? Wow, That kid's a kick. freshman, and he just drilled that one right between the uprights and tied this one at 24. The uh, brain bowl continues. They both look like geniuses to me. We, we've seen two guys that can really kick the football tonight. That one there, he absolutely drilled that kick. 
That's 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 pretty impressive for a freshman. You don't normally see freshman kickers are able to kick it like that. And he's contributing mightily. He's playing on offense. Had a big catch in the first quarter that set up the first touchdown. And has kicked well tonight for the Golden Eagles. All right. 149 left. Eric Yee and Michael Johnson are deep. Will they kick the ball deep? Well coached ball game tonight by Kelly Blunt and Lou Seward. Both second year coaches. Both have taken programs known for their academics and made them better on the football field. Uh, either one of them has probably been around this rivalry for too long, but they're both getting a good taste of it tonight. I can tell you this, no one's leaving. And they are rocking on the home sideline. Both defenses standing up when they had to. Both offensive offenses having their moments as well. Langford boots that one, and Johnson's going to come up and take it on the run. He goes to his left. He's going to have to outrun somebody and does. Johnson's got a lot of room. Johnson's got the 50. Johnson stays in bounds and gets all the way to the 41-yard line. Huge return from Michael Johnson. The senior steps up on homecoming. How about that when you need a play? He breaks a tackle initially, gets up the field, gets past the 50 yard line and then throws the defender out of the way. He says, I'm getting as much as I can on this one. Puts his team in great field position. Great play when you need it. Wow. I had an old We've... coach that used to tell me, you got to want to. That kid wants to. Yeah, watch this. Slips a tackle right there again. You can't arm tackle, but then gets up the field and he's not just going to take, he's not going to go down easily. Dismissed. Get out of my way. Well, you can't let the kicker tackle you. <laughs> Gregorian. Rolling out, pressure in his face, throws in the neighborhood of Yee, had pressure from number seven, Dominique Perkins, forced the wide throw. 135, second and 10. Remember, Brust attempted a 50-yarder earlier. They are not far away. They're only about eight yards short of where he kicked that from earlier in tonight's game, and he had the distance then. Four wide receivers. This is the formation that has been very successful for them tonight. Gregorian in the gun, twins to both sides, Bird beside him. They're going to blitz it again right up the middle. Here it comes. They're throwing the deep pass, oh. overthrown and out of bounds. And again, pressure. This time from number 71, Richard Allen. Second incompletion, clock stops with 130 remaining. Well, if he'd been able to set his feet on that one, he had Tim Mulady wide open going down the field. He got past the defender and had a couple of steps on him. The defensive backs for Paxson just manning up and covering the best that they can. They figure if they're bringing seven, you're not going to have much time to stand around there and pick a receiver. Same formation, but this time Bird is in the slot and Johnson is with him. They run uh, the option, and that goes mainly nowhere. About half a yard, Gregorian dives down, and will they call timeout on the far sideline? Yes, they will. Timeout signaled by Paxson, and they're going to get one opportunity. Well, Paxson certainly not letting a, you know, crunch time take any of the aggressiveness away from the defense. They're still blitzing it for the first time. I saw the safeties come up on the slots. So they are playing very aggressively on defense right now. 24-24 in what has been a fantastic ball game to watch. We said it when we came on the air. The graphic says one and seven and three and six. And you're thinking, why am I going to watch this? Well, this is why. High school football. Two evenly matched teams, two terrific performances, one of the best that we have had this year. They have been efficient, they have been physical, they have been fun to watch. There's been no lull in this game. Absolutely not, not a dull moment. Nary a one, and now it is fourth and ten. And what am I looking at? It's fourth and ten. Are they just trying to force him to use a timeout? Or are they actually going to run a play? I think they're actually going to run the play. Gregorian is in the gun. Here we go. Fourth down. Gregorian sets, throws. He's looking for Yee. Yee man, can't make the catch. He stumbled backpedaling. Some incidental contact. Caught a cleat. And now Paxson takes over at their own 41. Oh, oh my goodness. 114 remaining. What do they have in store for us next? Eric Yee. 
he had that one. Oh, Eric, he's played so well tonight. Yeah. And just lost his balance trying to backpedal under that one. Had the defender fooled. He was going to field it like a punt. Boy, just too many drops tonight for Stanton. David Lee sets, looks right, throws right, has Langford, but bounced it to him. Second down, 109. Again, trying to get it to the freshman, though. Not afraid to put a freshman into, into the spotlight here tonight in crunch time. Kid has been a player all night. Boy, after the big return by Johnson, you thought Stanton had the momentum. Yeah. Now it is back in question. Shotgun, three receivers. This time it's Marlowe. Marlowe gets pressure. He can run if he wants to and does. Marlowe will have the first down and stop the clock at the 47-yard line, 101 remaining. My goodness, this fourth quarter seems like molasses, and Stanton has a player injured back inside the 35. Nice. Referees have not picked it up as yet. Now they do. Nice job by Marlowe to make himself skinny in the blitz there. There were a couple guys, there were guys on each side of him that could have brought him down, but he made himself skinny, slid through the pressure, and then took off up the field. And number 51, Danny Adamson, who starts at both guard and defensive tackle, is on his back. And while they attend to Mr. Adamson, we will uh, respectfully take a break ourselves. It is tied at 24-24, fourth quarter. Paxson, Stanton, don't go anywhere. Exciting conclusion of this one coming up on your Comcast High School Football Game of the Week. Welcome back. Thanks for sticking around. Great conclusion. I'm sure to come second, I'm sorry, first and 10. 58 seconds and rolling. Lee, pressure. Lee, sacked. Number 21, Anthony Jeanette from the linebacker position. Brings him down. Clock is running. 45 seconds. Substitutions slow to come from Paxson. Second and a whole lot. While we were away, uh, Adamson did get up and off the field under his own power, Danny Adamson. Big play by Jeanette. They never saw him coming. They need the 36 for a first down. Marlowe throwing. Catch by Barry. Barry's getting pressured and wailed from the back. Oh, my goodness. A decleater. Guess who again. it is again? It's the Jeanette show. 15 <laughs> seconds left. Timeout called and Keon Barry. Woo, bubbles. You know, for two teams with non-idyllic records, this has been probably one of the most, this has probably been the most exciting game we've seen this year. I, Jeanette, who just had the sack on the last play, Boom. come from, again, they don't see him coming. You better keep an eye open for that guy. Wow. Uh, I don't know if you read in the papers recently, but they've invented a cloaking device where they can simulate a mirage like you see in the <laughs> desert. I think he's wearing it tonight. This one has been like a great fiction, ladies and gentlemen. We've had suspense. We've had mystery. We've had plot twists. It's double, and like I said, suspense. There's more suspense coming. Ding dong. Oh. That was not Avon calling. That was Jeanette. Okay, third down just inside the 44-yard line. They need the 36 for a first down. They probably need somewhere around the 25 to legitimately have a chance at a field goal. And I don't know if you can tell it on your television, but rain is falling, and it's beginning to fall harder than it has all night. Lee under center. Long count. Is he looking for the swing pass? Doesn't matter what he's looking it's, for. He's it's going down. Yeah. It's Jeanette. Uh, Dan, who made the sack on that play? <laughs> who else? Jeanette, three plays in a row. Anthony Jeanette will be putting this one on the shelf on DVD or VCR or whatever you'd like to he'd put it up on YouTube, son. That was a terrific series. Three plays. Three plays by Anthony Jeanette. He's trying to act coy down there. like Sack, sack, decleater. Yeah. Wow. Talk about coming up big on the crunch. And uh, folks, 
we are headed to overtime. overtime. Your Comcast High School Game of the Week. It's our second one of the year. If you are not familiar with the format, let us ah, let Dan explain it to you. Well, gonna, each, each team is going to get the same number of possessions. They'll come out here for a coin toss. Uh, they'll get the same number of possessions from the 10-yard line. And whoever wins the toss will most likely select defense because they want to know what the other team, what they have to do on offense to, to, to score to either tie or take the lead. Actually, what they're telling us is there are five, seven seconds left on the clock. We thought they had waved it off. They had put the time on the board instead of, of uh, for the overtime. It was scored to add a couple of seconds. So this will be the last play. Here comes Jeanette again. Of tonight's game. And before they run the snap, well, they have the, the, I'm sorry, it will be the last snap of the fourth quarter unless points are achieved by either team on this play. What they did is they added seconds back on the clock. We thought they were putting up the, the uh, time for the break in between the fourth quarter and overtime when, in fact, we're going to have one more play. doesn't matter that it's fourth down. They will run the play out. They want seven seconds on the clock is what they are asking for. And I guess conceivably if they got a quick sack, seven seconds wouldn't run off. But Seward has made up his mind to take the chances. You see the rain starting to fall now in Jacksonville. You can't rain on this parade. This one has been terrific. Great shot, guys, and the light. Going through the precipitation, it is a Thursday evening, Thursday evening before Florida-Georgia weekend in Jacksonville. Many of our normal Friday night matchups moved to Thursday. This one of them, it doesn't matter what night you're playing this one on, people are showing up. They're going to turn and hand off, and that's oh a quick my. tackle, and there is still time left on the clock. Now Paxson has given Stanton an opportunity to line up and throw one down the field. Kind of an odd call. I thought maybe they just line up, let the quarterback hold the ball for a second or two, and then fire it down one of the sidelines and basically kill the clock. Quick tackle, though. We'll see what. You want to stay away from a defensive penalty. You certainly don't want to turn the ball over. But Art Gregorian has displayed the type of leadership and aptitude at the quarterback position that I think his coach Kelly Blunt will trust him to do and execute whatever he calls. Good he's going to give him that. two uh, he's going to give him two receivers, I'm sorry, two backs and three receivers. I think he's going to roll to his left. No. Standing, throwing that ball slipped out of his hands in the rain and it's tipped and intercepted and watch out you got to make a tackle now. Coming back the other direction is Markel West, I'm sorry, oh Marlowe. Marlowe's got to make Momentum down the sideline, but is tackled by Bird at the 40-yard line. There is a pen. Oh, my goodness. If that is counted as a defensive penalty to end the game, oh that would Lord. be 15 yards and give them the opportunity to kick a field goal on an untimed down and win the game. What are they going to call? It can't be a late it hit. It was a late hit, Dan. I saw it. Unless he was blocked in the back to a late hit. It is. It's an offensive penalty. They're going to decline that, and that will end the fourth quarter, but not end the game. 24-24. We let's try this again, Dan. We're going to overtime. overtime, and we're doing it for the second time tonight. I'm saying it for the second time tonight, and the second time on our Comcast High School game of the week. Had a game uh, earlier over at Episcopal that went into high, into uh, overtime, and it. <laughs> It was an interesting yeah, ending to that one. I'm hoping for a better end to that one. Dan, you, you were starting to explain. Yeah. Both teams will have the same number of possessions. They'll each get the ball at the 10-yard line, and they'll have a chance to run their their regular offense. They get four downs. They, they can try They can try a, a field goal at the end of that, or they can continue to try and go for the end zone. No matter what, each team will get the same number, number of possessions until somebody is the winner. They'll come out for a coin toss here. Whoever wins the coin toss, will elect to play defense. defense. That way, they'll get the ball second, and they'll, they'll go out on the field with their offense knowing what they have to do to either tie or win the game. This one has been all you wanted and more. And it's not over, over yet. yet. <laughs> what do they have for us in overtime? <laughs> it has been terrific entertainment here on a Thursday night. 
you, you started to mention that overtime game that we did earlier. <laughs> One of the strangest endings to a game. It had running backs for each team that were really playing well until one of the running backs basically had a meltdown, throws his helmet across the field, and put his team into a position where they just could not convert. <laughs> just unreal. I don't think we'll see anything like that here tonight. And every fan standing. Watching, enjoying this one. It's your Comcast High School Football Game of the Week. Paxson at Stanton. We could not decide this one in four quarters, and you know what? That's okay with me. Terrific game, and look at this. Both the coaches are out there. Coaches Blunt and Seward, and uh, Coach Seward telling us he considers Kelly Blunt a friend and uh, really enjoys coaching against him. They know it's a great game, too. Mm -hmm. Both of them were smiling. They knew what they, they knew they they were in something special here tonight. And grin on Coach Blunt's face and uh, Coach uh, Seward I have to recall has uh, just relocated here after coaching at Missouri West which is a D2 school in Indiana State which is 1AA as an assistant was coaching wide receivers before taking over the program at, uh, at Paxson and was talking with him before the game and really likes what Coach Blunt has over has done over here at Stanton. I believe he called co called tails. And he won the toss, did Seward. And I'm pretty sure that Seward is going to say we want to play defense first. Now they're going to decide which end of the field we're going to play on. We're going to play towards trap or we're going to play towards the school. Okay, towards the school. And the rules being explained to both coaches. And this is a situation that neither team has been in this year. Paxson with losses to Bishop Kenny, Baldwin, University Christian, Inglewood, Terry Parker, and Fletcher. Wins over Yulee Potter's House and Trenton. Stanton with a win over Rebalt. Losses at Fort White, Orange Park, Forest, Crescent City, Lee, Inglewood, and Terry Parker have one more game next week. Does Stanton against University Christian. The meeting on the field has broken up. And everybody working over tonight. Refs, players, coaches, fans. Comcast. You called it early. You said, you know, when, when this game was obviously showing that it was going to be a pretty great game, you said you wish it would be five quarters tonight. <laughs> well, here you go. What's that saying? Be careful what you wish for. We got it overtime. And as we mentioned, Paxson did win the toss and elect to go on defense first. How is that an advantage? It allows you to see what the opposing offense does. If they score a field goal, a touchdown wins. If they don't happen to score, you can line up on first down and kick a field goal if you like and win the game. Armed with that knowledge, Paxson will go on offense after seeing what the Stanton offense has for them. Stanton's offense led by Art Gregorian. And Dan, I'd almost favor Stanton in the overtime position because they have been able to, to run something successfully over and over again, and that has been Gregorian. And this time they're going to actually hand the ball off but in the, the, a gain of about half a yard. The flip side of that is, though, both offenses are going to be down here in tight quarters. Yeah, and I have to red. say that Paxson's offensive line, you know, when they've when they've been at equal numbers, mm -hmm. has had the advantage. Yeah, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. But if you've got a – is there one thing – that Paxson has done that you could really hang your hat on, yeah. especially here in the second half. I would no. say no. Yeah, you're, you're right. They, they have struggled to uh, they've, they've struggled to, to be successful running the ball when Stanton is blitzing. And that has really slowed their offense down a little bit. No clock here in overtime. It's immaterial. Four downs unless there is a defensive penalty, which would reset that. And that is not a defensive penalty, but that is a defensive win. That's 40 and 41. Lindsey Harris and Brandon Campbell. Outside linebacker, middle linebacker, six yards deep in the backfield. Think they were blitzing? Yes, they were. And Lindsey Harris has made a couple of big plays tonight. He's an impressive looking linebacker. All right, you have a terrific kicker in Zach Brust. 
well within his range. Do you trust your senior quarterback who has carriage to put the ball in the air and risk a turnover on third down? I would because I think he's made some pretty smart decisions tonight. The one thing I would tell him, make sure you hold on to it. Don't fumble this ball. But I, I trust that he's Middle he's of the field is wide open. And he's looking to the outside, throws to Yee. He's got a touchdown. Eric Yee got inside of the quarterback on the on the near sideline. And Yee dropped one in the fourth quarter, but he cradled that one in. They go up by six. Brust extra point to come. Yeah. Paxson will need a touchdown when they get the ball. That's the kind of lesson you learn in football. Things don't always go your way, but you keep your head up and you keep plugging along, keep plugging along, and eventually you're going to get a chance to make up for a mistake he made earlier, and he comes up with a huge play here in overtime. All right, Brust has been good all night, but it is raining. The ball is wet. Gregorian, the quarterback, is the holder. Snap is high. Brust is into it. Turns that one right down the middle. 31-24. Paxson will need a touchdown and an extra point. We are going to take a quick break. Don't go anywhere. Paxson will get their chance in overtime right after this on Comcast. And welcome back. The Paxson offense, Golden Eagles taking the field. Stanton Blue Devils defense exhorting the crowd, and they've got them into the game. Lee will start at quarterback. He'll toss it to Pig. Pig stretching it. Pig's going to lose yardage. Pig is going to be hit and swarmed under eight of the ten Blue Devil players over there. And Pig's going to lose about half a yard. That play was going nowhere from the get-go. Great job of swarming to the football by that Stanton defense. We've seen the linebackers really active in the second half here and getting into the backfield and making plays. We've got the defense chant going right in front of us here. I'm looking around heads and bodies and trying to watch this one along with you. Second down. There goes Marlowe. Marlowe caught by the defensive line and dragged down. Will set up third down from about the 10. Two plays, no yards. Third down. They've got to get into the end zone. Well, it's been a guessing game all night, all in the entire second half here for Stanton, and they've won it all night long. Again, they line up. James Lee this time does not blitz. He goes back into coverage and takes away the, the crossing receiver. David Lee, three wide receivers. Straight drop. He's going to run it himself. There's nothing there. Taken down again. Trying to get a number for you with the defensive lineman who's being helped up right now. That's 51. Danny Adamson, who went out injured in the fourth quarter, is back in there playing hard. They need to make one more play, and the celebration will be a wild one here at Stanton. Paxson must score on this down or get a defensive penalty, or this one is over. 31-24 in overtime. Shotgun, three wide receivers, two backs. Marlowe looking, Marlowe running, Marlowe, touchdown, spinning into the end zone off the big hit by Yee, too little, too late, 31-30, here comes the all-important extra point, the young man helicoptered into the end zone, he may be injured, yeah, he but he hit pay dirt. Well, he did a nice job of just sitting back there and staying patient until he had nowhere to go, hole opened up and he took off, he could have panicked. There were guys coming around him on the outsides. He just stayed back there, waited, waited. Paul opened up and he took off. There was a penalty on uh, Stanton on the play. Was declined. Touchdown is good. Langford on, the freshman who has been so solid in those red shoes all night. Will hold. Rain has slacked somewhat. Timeout. Timeout. Timeout called by Stan. Here you go. You got a freshman kicker. I think that's Going. a little freeze play. <laughs> what do you think? Icing the kicker. Does yeah. it work? Uh, no, because kickers are so strange <laughs> that they don't even realize they're being iced. <laughs> <laughs> Kickers rarely know where they are. Well, that freshman over there, Langford, the kicker, wide receiver, he's got ice in his veins. He has been a cool customer all night. I don't think this is going to rattle him. Yeah, I, you know, I'll give him credit. He's a position player. So yep. 
he, he, he does do some other stuff. <laughs> Your Comcast High School Game of the Week in overtime. Langford needs this one to continue the football game. You're a freshman, and the game's hinging on you. Kick is up. Got it. Kick is good. 31-31. Overtime will continue. Touchdowns by both offenses in the first quarter of overtime. Well, that's kind of neat, you know. It, the extra point is never a given in high school football. Absolutely We've seen every not. extra point kick tonight by both teams. Both field goal kickers have, have made at least one, and they've both kicked the ball pretty well when they've had a chance to, to put points on the board. I think we had one miss for Stanton, but it wasn't because of length. I, I, that's pretty impressive to see kicking games this strong at the high school level, especially when one of the kickers is a freshman. Mm -hmm. And one of the quirks of overtime, if you were on offense second in the quarter, you go right back out there. That sometimes works into a fatigue for the defense. Uh, Paxton it, will get their opportunity to yeah. go first Bounces here in the second out. in the second overtime period. And Marlowe, who was at quarterback and ran it in, shaken up, not in the ball game. It is David Lee who he, he has rotated with all night. Marlowe, the senior, Lee, a sophomore. Pig to his left. Three receivers. Myers is the receiver out of your screen to the near side, bottom of your screen. Pressure from the back side and reeled. I wonder who that was. <laughs> Anthony Jeanette. I, I'm telling you. Like what. he was shot out of a cannon. His third sack in the last 10 minutes. You know what? I. It's incredible. What a what a big second half and overtime period he's had tonight. You know, I think Art Gregorian was was really leading this team in the first half. No question that Jeanette's been <laughs> has been the MVP of the second half and overtime. Big loss on the play. Roughly six yards. Marlowe back in the game despite being injured. They're trying to run an end around, and that was blown up from immediately, and that's 51 again. These guys are taking turns. Adamson and Jeanette back and forth. Another loss on the play. They're having to help Adamson to his feet, but he's not coming out. Well, remember in the first half when they tried to blitz it, and Paxson picked it up and absolutely stonewalled it and just gave him a numbers game in the secondary? It's been the exact opposite. The pressure has been, has been extremely effective here since halftime. Two plays, 11 yards backwards for the Golden Eagles. They need a big play here just to make it a more manageable field goal. Devils showing blitz and they're bringing it. They're throwing into the far end zone looking for Langford that is overthrown will bring up fourth down and what would be a 38 yard field goal attempt for Langford who was just running the corner pattern. Yeah, well, and the quarterback did what he had to do. You got that much pressure coming at you. You got to get rid of the football. Mm -hmm. And you can't miss short there, a turnover in overtime is a killer. They're going to go for the field goal. Absolutely, have to. Got to put some points on the board. This is no chip shot. Where are they putting this? It should be at the 29. If the spot is where I think they're going to call timeout, I believe, and they will. Paxson burns another timeout. All the way, baby! And we've got another pivotal, pivotal play in tonight's ball game. They're excited again as the Stanton defense has stuffed the Paxson offense here in the second overtime and forced a lengthy field goal opportunity when play resumes. Dan, all right, I'm going to give you two scenarios. Okay. First one, they miss the field goal. If you're Stanton, you come out on offense at the 10-yard line, what do you do? I, I with my kicker as strong as he is mm -hmm. i run the ball trying to get four or five yards at least you know maybe you pop one in for a touchdown but i'm not going to give them a chance to knock me out of field goal range i've got a kicker that's got a really strong leg all you need is three points to win the game you don't want to completely shut it down you want you want to make them stay honest but I, i'd be real tempted i, I do not want to get backed up 40 yard field goal we'll talk about the other scenario after this play, and we'll have a much better idea of which one is 
going to be in play. Pressure from the left. That ball is tipped and blocked. And guess who no blocked no it? No way. Anthony Jeanette off the left side, number 21, got a hand on it. Stanton's offense will take the field, needing only a field goal to end this game. He's a one-man defense. He's a wrecking machine, Rock. <laughs> He's having, this has got to be the night of his life. Anthony Jeanette on homecoming. Uh, did he pick the right game, too? Because he could get a tape of this game. And <laughs> I mean, he picks the televised game to do this. The young man has timing. Gregorian is going to run this right up the middle. Gregorian is running towards the end zone. Gregorian dives. Gregorian to the one. I right, make it the two. That is the one. Wow, I thought he was going to get in. They may not need the field goal kicker. Inside the one-yard line. Second down. Any point will end the game. Run it to the right. Touchdown, field goal, whatever. Full house backfield. Bird is the tailback. They hand it to Bird. He's not going to get there. He is not going to get there. Third down. Oh, wait a second. No, no, no. That's not, boys. People are thinking that the back judge is signaling touchdown. He's signaling third down. Third down. They almost started to rush the field here. Big difference. Big difference. Third down. Okay, now you've got another decision to make. Run it to the right. Okay. Get it in the middle. Hey, either get it in the end zone or get it in the middle of the field. Get it in the middle of the field for the placement is what you're asking for, Dan. Yes. In case you do not score, you want to run to the right to give your kicker a better angle for what would be a game-winning field goal. Is that going to be necessary? Gregorian surges, touchdown. touchdown, forget it. This one is, oh, what in the Whoa. world? Oh, I thought. What in the world? He didn't get in? Boy, he had a nice gap off the, off right up the middle there to start. I thought he was okay, in. Okay, I don't have the best angle of that. There, no, both both line judges got the fist in the air. Oh. My apologies. That is fourth down, and we're going to have to kick this one. I saw the same thing you did. Uh, we, we can't see the goal line from up here, but, boy, he certainly had a hole at the start of that play, and he got a, a nice forward surge. I thought he was going to get in for sure. Credit to the, stand, or the Paxton defensive line for turning him back. There was definitely enough room to end it there. Timeout now signaled. Paxton again. And it will come down to Zach Brust. Extra point, I'm sorry, field goal attempt by Stanton in the top half of the inning, if you would, was blocked for the first possession of this second overtime. And Stanton with the ball in what amounts to the bottom half of the inning with an opportunity to win at any point will win. And number six, Zach Brust standing by himself just out of camera range to your right as the rest of his mates have gathered. Again, we, we don't have the best angle of, of it, from, but from up here, it looks like the ball is tickling the goal line. Mm. That, that must have been a tough call to make down there. Oh, I thought for sure he was in. For well, sure he was you in. You saw that hole open up just off to his left as soon as the play started, and he dove in there. Here we go. Gregorian, the holder. Make it. Let's, let's James Duncan. James Duncan is the short snapper. If this one splits the pipes, the ball game is over. Good snap, good hold, low nice. kick, it's good. It is good. Stanton Blue Devils with their second win of the season stun the Paxton Golden Eagles 34-31 in overtime. Great game. What a great game to watch. Look at the scene on the field. The students are out there partying with the players, jumping up and down, and why not? Enjoy it. That Enjoy this one. It does not get any better in scholastic sports than what you just saw. This is the kind of win that can jumpstart a program a little bit. Look at how excited the student body is. You've got a team that struggled a little bit, but hey, everybody's on board. Everybody's excited. This is the kind of thing that can build some momentum for you. Our thanks to Paxson's head coach, Lou Seward, in his second year. Fine effort by his team tonight. 
See if we can get a Dr. shot. Dr. James of Williams, Nanette Harrington from Paxson, our host tonight. Kelly Blunt and the Blue Devils. And we have uh, some of the Paxson players just on their backs in disbelief, refuse, just don't want to get up, don't want to leave the field. They're doing so in a very dignified manner. There's a replay, soccer style up. Nice and throw. good, and look at Russ, does he know it? Yes, sir. -y. This one's in the books off of the right foot of that young man. Great scene here tonight. Again, I was thanking our host, Athletic Director Kelly Brunt, Principal uh, Deborah Lynch. And let's talk about the uh, some of the coaches. We, we thank both Kelly Blunt and Lucy or Dan. Comment on this before we wrap this one up. Well, like I said, I mean, this is just great. It's a great scene, a program that has struggled a little bit in past years. And to get a big win like this, look at how excited the student body is about this win. This gives you, hey, football's popular again at this school. You know I mean? It gives you a chance to build off of this. Now kids are interested in the program. Take advantage of it. See if you can get some, yeah, some other younger kids Let's into go. the program. Build it up. Build up the numbers a little bit and see what, see where you can go with it. I mean, it's 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 a great win. It was a it was an absolutely fantastic game tonight. It was really fun to watch. And it, like I said, it, this is the kind of win that can give you a little bit of momentum. Two schools known more for their merit scholars than their football teams put on a terrific show tonight. Our congratulations to both teams. Not a loser here tonight. This one that ended up with fewer points in overtime. Stanton over Paxson on your Comcast High School Game of the Week. And there's Eric Yee, who made a big catch for a touchdown. And uh, redemption. It's redemp redemption is exactly what's going on for that young man. All right, for our executive producer, Ann Carter Murphy, our producer, Toby Douglas, our entire Comcast staff and crew, Kathy Hudson, Jackie Spears, for Dan Gad. I'm Jeremy Beloit saying so long. Hope you enjoyed this one. Stanton over Paxson on your Comcast High School Football Game of the Week. You're watching Comcast 14. Exclusive local programming for to play another play. Well, it's too bad he couldn't get that snap. He may have had Bird wide open in the middle of the field for a touchdown. They went trips to the left, empty backfield like you said. Paxson reacted and only put three defenders out on the trips, and I don't know that they were ready to stop Bird, who came streaking over the middle. That would have been interesting if he'd been able to hold on to that, hold on to that ball. 2.20 and running remaining in the first half. It is homecoming for Stanton High School tonight. Asked Coach Blunt, any of your players taking part? He said, no. I like that. Yeah. Same formation. This time he gets the snap. Under pressure, takes a big hit. Gets the pass off and just off the hands of number 19, Tim Melody. And Ron, I'm sorry, Chad Morrow, that left defensive end, planted Art Gregorian. But he stood in there, made the pass, and that was catchable inside the 10-yard line for the wide receiver. Yeah. Just tries to one-hand it here. It's a little bit deep for him. And look at this, a 50-yard field goal being set up for by Zach Brust. We have a timeout signal. I did not pick up who signaled for the timeout. There's a good formation by the Blue Devil cheerleaders. Wouldn't surprise me to see him kick it. Kind of what Mandarin does, kick the ball out of the field goal formation, mm -hmm. kick it out of bounds, almost like a punt. Aim for one of the sidelines and see if you can cough and corner it. I'm going to tell you I disagree. Zach Brust watched him a little bit in pregame. He's got a good leg. Really? He's a soccer player and is young, along with uh, Dan Gad and Jeremy Beloit. And this is Comcast High School Game of the Week. Let's go back to Brust. Zach Brust, he's a senior. He is a soccer player. And uh, his coach telling me in direct quote, Good distance. Well, we're going to find out. This will be 50. They're spotting this ball out of the hold of Gregorian right on the 40-yard line. 10 for the end zone makes it 50, and this is a big-time field goal. Somewhat different, and there is a kicking tee involved in high school. And the important part of this one might be the snap, and Dan, you're right. 
Paxson is dropping a player. I think that's Barry back, in fact, in, in case this ball is short. That ball is hit, and it had the distance, but was pulled left. Might have overswung the leg on that occasion. Went out of the back of the end zone. No good. Remains 21-14. And Paxson will have a minute and 50 to work with. In a couple